day after the race of truth, it's time to once again race against each other. But with tomorrow's giant of Provence looming on the horizon, today should present possibilities for anyone willing to seize the moment. It's the last chance of this year's tour for the opportunists. Let's take a look at our Hampton Hotel's overall standings. It's Alberto Contador in yellow. Andy Schleck, four minutes and 11 seconds back. But then it gets interesting. Lance Armstrong, Bradley Wiggins, Andreas Cloden, and as we turn the page, Frank Schleck, all within 34 seconds of each other. American Christian Vandeveld now 10 seconds back, and it's Christophe Lumavelle who rounds out your top 10. Defending champion Carlos Sostra is in 14th, but over 15 minutes in arrears. His tour defense is over, and we see a few more Americans who are doing a lot of work here at the tour. Welcome to our Cadillac pre-race show, everyone, along with Bob Roll. I'm Craig Hummer. Well, the time test against the clock provided a lot of answers yesterday, Bob, most specifically for Alberto Contador. He did as well, if not better, than some predicted. Most definitely a great ride by Alberto Contador in defense of the yellow jersey. He is a good time trialist. He was a little bit shaky on that at the beginning of his career. That wasn't his favorite discipline, but now, in the last couple of years, since he won the Tour de France for the first time in 07, he has dramatically improved his time trial. Also, he wanted to prove to the world that he was the deserving man in the yellow jersey, and he went out and won the time trial. A great ride by Contador. Let's look at some of the highlights from the race of truth yesterday. Not only Contador, but also Andy Schleck, who we'll get to in a moment, did quite well. There's Contador. He's the last man to start leading the event. But the question was, could he time trial as well as he can climb? There's no doubt about his climbing prowess, but he put in an incredible first couple of time checks leading all the way. He did begin to fade towards the finish line and barely hung on against Fabian Cancellar, the best time trialist on earth. But for Contador, that was a solid ride. And as we have said, every tour champion wants to put a stamp of approval in that final time trial. That is what Contador does. He wins stage number 18 to go along with his stage up to Verbier. I mentioned Andy Schleck a moment ago. While Contador lived up to expectations, I think Schleck exceeded them. Far exceeding the expectations, everyone thought he would lose his position on the the podium. He's second overall at the start of the stage, but he did the time trial of his life on yesterday's time trial stage, and that was great riding by the Luxemburger on the Saxo Bank squad, and he was able to consolidate his position in second, not only to just lose a little bit of time, but really to exceed all expectations. A great stage for Andy Schleck, and it also portends that he's going to be a big contender in the Tour de France in the future. So those two lived up to what they were supposed to do. You can see their stats, of course, constantly Contador, our overall leader, he won a couple years ago the Tour de France, and he's already got those two stage wins here. But Andy Schleck in the white jersey of best young rider, a lot of people think he's got a Tour championship in his future. Well, if he can time trial the way he can climb, he'll definitely be competitive in this event in the years to come. A young man still competing for the white jersey for the second time he won that last year, and he has almost a virtual lock on it for this year. So Andy Schleck, also a potential Tour contender in the years to come. A guy who used to have a lock on the time trial was American Lance Armstrong. He admitted Bobby ran out of gas towards the end and felt the effects perhaps of the Queen stage the day before. Huge mountain stage the day before the time trial. Lance Armstrong still coming into back form, into top form after a four-year layoff coming back to the, to the Tour de France. He did a good first time check. He did a decent climb, but then back into the headwind. I think he was a little bit disappointed with his results in the time trial, honestly. Lance is so used to being the one that powers to the line and then celebrates at the finish. The closing moments for Armstrong of stage 18. He had been on this course a number of times beforehand before the tour started. He expected a little bit more from himself. As Bob mentioned, he was very disappointed at the end, finished a minute and 30 seconds behind the eventual winner, Alberto Contador. But now, let's continue this discussion about the battle for the podium. These are the four men with all realistic shots to end up there in Paris. One thing about Lance's time trial is he did move himself back up into third place overall. Bradley Wiggins, I think a little bit disappointed. He thought he would blow the field away in the time trial. That did not happen, but he's in fourth. Cloden, a decent time trial. Not his best ever. He is in fifth. And Frank Schleck, pretty disappointing time trial. He plummets from third all the way down to sixth overall. Alberto Contador served up a time-trialing tutorial in Stage 18. Now it's back to the basics of the road. Stay protected, stay out of trouble, and stay in yellow. The 2009 Tour de France pre-race on Versus is presented by Cadillac. The relationship
relationship you have with your car isn't so different from your other relationships. Some burn hot and fast, but don't last very long. Some burn for a while, but don't throw much heat. And some smolder beautifully for a long time. The award-winning Cadillac CTS sedan. And coming soon, the all-new CTS Sport Wagon. There are moments in life when there are no limits, no boundaries, no walls. That the rules of gravity just don't apply. Because there is no statute of limitations on greatness. for the man in yellow to consolidate his power with his incredible time trial. All the other three jerseys stayed the same as well. Welcome back to our Cadillac pre-race show. It's now time to welcome in our oracles of Obana, Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin. Guys, it's the home stretch. Only three stages left to go. And I tell you what, the man in third, Lance Armstrong, has three guys breathing down his neck only 34 seconds back. So extrapolate in Paris. Who's going to fill out the steps, Phil? Well, I think there's one man for the yellow, obviously, and there's five guys for second and third. But when we started our coverage of the Tour de France, I said the order would be Contador, Armstrong, and Andy Schleck. I think it'll still be the same guys, might be slightly different in the order. I think there's going to be a big battle uh, for third place because I have a feeling the, the top two men are pretty solid. Alberto Contador shouldn't crack on the slopes of the Mont Ventoux, neither too should Andy Schleck. However, it's going to be a huge battle to be third and I know uh, Mr Armstrong certainly wants to be there. Uh, I have to say that uh, Lance is looking tired looking tired but when he says don't worry about Mount Vaughn too I think you can count on that and it's not out of the question that he passes Andy Schleck so your original prediction might stand true that's my Bob <laughs> he's got some unfinished business as we know talking about Lance and Vaughn to tomorrow but today Paul take us through the map because this is not a stage that they should look over that's actually a very difficult stage and it could catch one or two riders out by surprise that maybe made that a little bit more difficult of course by the heat because it's going to be exceptionally hot it'll be tickling a hundred degrees Fahrenheit as they go through this cauldron in the middle of France. bourgogne jalieu is the start. There's a, a little bit of undulation to begin with, flat through the middle across the Rhone Valley, but down just before the end, the organizers not very kind putting that second category climb in there <laughs> just before the run into Aubenas. It's also quite a twisty running and slightly uphill to the finish. So it's first time we started at bourgogne jalieu onto Aubenas. We've been there before, 111 miles, about the same distance between Portland and Boston. Second time we've been here, Joe Deroux, he was a sprinter he won in 1966 and as we see two category four climbs and the big one coming at the end one category two well speaking of podiums our podium shuffled a little bit in our cadillac performance <laughs> my podium didn't shuffle at all you're right you're right that's true and what you still have a chance don't you <laughs> no, i think no. mathematically is there any chance no. for phil liggett yes no there never no, has well. been a chance for phil liggett. No. <laughs> come on phil you were in it from day one you just didn't know it <laughs> Phil has laid down the foundations of a very serious last position. The foundations <laughs> are right, the bottom of the foundations, yeah. 2010, your point towards, That's it, right? I'll come That's back. what the foundations are for? When the Radio Shack team takes part, wait till then. All right, well, we will wait for that, but we've got a couple more stages to go, so let's look at our Cadillac performance prediction standings after the time trial, and look at that, gentlemen. It looks as though I'll be taking the yellow jersey back, if not for at least today, hopefully, as we go into Paris. Bob on 21. Paul got points as well yesterday. Well done, Mr. Sherwin. Thank you very much. All right. Keep in solid there. Are Just you are waiting for the Phil, last move. Yeah. How'd you feel about your pick yesterday? Uh, not too good because <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> Well, all right. But, I mean, Paul O'Bradley, was, I thought he was going to rip the field apart. He did And then the he hit half. that block headwind and he tumbled out. Do you know what? Jonathan Waters didn't believe the time of Bradley Wings. In fact, he went to the judges to have it checked. He couldn't believe Bradley could lose that much time in the last few kilometres. 
Bob Roll is playing this game for keeps, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, he's look got at the smile on his face. Today, and when our producer called him for that pick, you didn't even hesitate for a second, did you? It came to me in a flash of inspiration, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I couldn't have Christophe Moreau next to my name, though, in any way, shape, or form. That's one thing I will say. Wow. Well, we'll get to that in a bit, but you go ahead with your pick. <laughs> I'm, ta I'm taking Oscar Ferrer, the Spaniard. He's a sprinter, but he can also climb a little bit. Rabobank has won nothing in this year's Tour de France. I think that they're talking about canceling their sponsorship because the guys haven't done anything so far. This is a man that never gives up. He always waits for his moment. He's very clever. He's got some climbing legs, so I think that he'll be able to get over that last cat, too, with a big group mm. and be the only sprinter, and he will get me some points. We'll see. <laughs> Everybody following Phil on Twitter, today could be the day that he makes his move. It all starts with this next pick. Well, I was inspired by Bob Roll's pick of Luis Leon Sanchez. Out of the blue, makes the break, wins the day. I think it'll be a, a breakaway. I think it'll be somebody who's been very aggressive in this Tour de France. And he's had six second places in history on stages. Today, he'll get a win. Sandy Cassar, what a champion that man is. It'll be the fourth stage win for the Tour de France and for France in the Tour de France. I reckon. Okay. Well, now we come to the third pick of the day. <laughs> and for me, I, I use the the tactic of throwing the dartboard at the field. Uh, you know, a lot of us have talked about breakaway possibilities, as you just mentioned, Phil, so mm. I'm going to go with the Frenchman that Bob ridiculed me on Merci a moment ago. <laughs> the man from Agri Tubel, Christophe Moreau, Merci who, as you can see, has worn the yellow jersey before back in 2001. His best Tour de France came in 2005. He's been very close the past three days in the top ten the past three days. Oh, I'm yeah. ignoring you, Bob. I'm ignoring you. I'm talking to the people. Okay, He's but so no. I haven't gonna... even got any video of him. <laughs> Craig, Craig, thank you very much. I'm, I'm really glad that you've thrown the game this afternoon because Good. you've thrown Good. all of your chances away. Go ahead. I'm last. Ah, right, of course. <laughs> uh, it is a difficult one today, and I think uh, it will be a breakaway, and the man who's going to get into the break is going to be an Italian, and I'm going to go for the Italian national champion. Because of the fact it's extremely hot today, he's the kind of bike rider who knows how to resist these elements. Pippo Pozzato is the man who'll get into the break for Team Katusha. Uh, he's had a very good start to the season, but he's had a very quiet Tour de France this year, so that's why I think he's going to take it home for the Italians. All right, well, this is what we are playing for right here. There's only two days to go, we should remind you, because this game doesn't go all the way to Paris, because Paris, we got a few more important things to talk about. So two days left, today and tomorrow, oh. who's going to have it? Which one of us? Any, any last words? No, no, share. I have Anything a feeling Bob, I think Bob's going to win this year. I think Bob, only okay. Bob will score. You feel it's Bob's year. All right. Well, I like my two-point tenuous lead at the moment. We'll find out soon enough who holds on I guess who would have been first to pick stage. in Paris. This isn't a stage to be taken lightly or looked over. After 19 days, there's still a game of seconds going on. The 2009 Tour de France pre-race on Versus is presented by Cadillac. and going to clubs. That really is passive way of meeting people. E-Harmony really is an active thing. It's I'm ready, I want this. E-Harmony is a tool in that choice. eHarmony.com. Review all your matches for free. Well, I was shopping for a new car. Which one's me? A cool convertible or an SUV? Too bad I didn't know my credit was whack because now I'm driving off the lot in a used subcompact. F-R-E-E, -E, that spells free. Creditreport.com, baby. Saw their ads on my TV. Thought about going but was too lazy. Now instead of looking fly and rolling fat, my legs are sticking to the vinyl and my posse's getting laughed at. F-R-E-E, -E, that spells free. Creditreport.com, baby. Offer applies with enrollment and triple advantage. When was the last time you climbed a tree? Or bit off more than you could chew? Remember when you landed the big one? 
or at least said you did? Save on the gear to get it done at Bass Pro Shops, like Bushnell 8x30 binoculars with built-in camera for only $99.94 and the Ruger Limited Edition 22 rifle for just $299.99. Your adventure starts here. Make plans now for the Bass Pro Shops Fall Hunting Class. Through the years, many things pass from father to son, like Aqua Velva Aftershave. Smells great, cools, firms, and tones. Cool. Aqua Velva, men get it. Wake up your whiskers with Electric Shave. Electric Shave! Stands up whiskers for an up to 52% closer shave. Man, that was close. Electric Shave, blade close, electric smooth. Michelle has had leukemia since she was two. The Coleman twins were born 24 weeks premature. Max had his first surgery when he was three days old. These kids are alive today, and it's a real miracle. When your child needs help, there's a Children's Miracle Network hospital nearby. Go to childrensmiraclenetwork.org to support our hospitals helping local kids. Finale in Paris, so time is running out for the riders to nab a last-minute win. Today is the perfect day for the escape artist to spoil the sprinter's moments and steal the spotlight. All the top dogs will be conserving their energy now to tackle the monster that is Mont Ventoux tomorrow. The Tour de France is almost over. Don't miss any of its final moments as we wind our way southwards, next on Versus. After the time trial, the Tour de France has turned south away from Paris. It's looking for Mont Ventoux. It'll find it tomorrow, and today it's an undulating stage to the beautiful scenery of the Ardèche. It's a long, hot day in the saddle of 111 miles. This man explaining the ups and downs of the Tour de France. Hello everybody, welcome back. It really is a scorcher today. We're in Ober now, waiting for the riders here. I'm Phil Liggett, this is Paul Sherwin. I can tell you at the moment there is a break on. Well, yesterday, Paul, in the time trial, I think uh, Contador is safe, but the next six riders are fighting for second. They certainly are going to fight for second and third, and that's what the big battle will be, Phil, tomorrow on the slopes of the Mont Ventoux, because even Andy Schleck in second position, currently on the podium, is looking a bit fragile. But that we think will be tomorrow. Today, it's a chance for someone to win a stage. Normally, it's the sprinters but as I say a break has started but let's have a look what's happened over the flat stages of this year's tour you see a bunch sprint on the second day Mark Cavendish doing a double there well uh, almost every time there has been a bunch sprint Mark Cavendish has come up with the victories although he was uh, spoiled to the line in Barcelona slightly uphill by Tor Hushoft on the other days the breakaway has survived and with the heat in this part of France today Phil I think it's a great day for the breakaways once again all right, well, before we catch up with the breakaways, let's have a look at the Nature Valley stage reset, see how it all happened earlier today. The rollout are down at the start of bourgoin gelieu The yellow jersey firmly on the shoulders of Alberto Contador. Now, Contador getting ready to see uh, whether or not there would be rapid attacks from the gun, but uh, on this occasion, I think because of the heat, a slightly gentle rollout past kilometre zero. Took about nine kilometres to start getting the rides away, and this is the skill Shimano, a Thierry Yupon, who just gets up to the front and snatches the fourth category climb. The Côte de Coulin, David Loosley and Igor Martinez taking their places. First sprint, it was a good tussle list between Nicholas Roach on the right and, and uh, on the other side, of Duque. Duque is a very fast sprinter from Colombia. He got the win over Roach there, and onto the climb of the Côte de la Forêt. Well, at this point, the breakaway had already formed a breakaway of 19 riders, leaving them to the summit of the climb. Uh, this is uh, Geoffroy Le Quatre, just ahead again of Nicolas Roach and Leonardo Duque. So that's our Nature Valley stage reset, and uh, this, as we watch our pictures again in high definition, is the most modern abbey, the Abbey of Notre Dame de Triot. It was only finished in 1984, and it's home to 40 monks. Uh, 
also enjoying a sunny day today 92 degrees the highs today very light wind five miles per hour the riders in the Tour de France they're getting smaller but not very quickly I must say still 158 left in and six of the teams are still intact it's been a while since we've taken six complete teams to Paris on the pulse today Chris Anker Sorensen UC Vakenen and Stefan Auger and uh, they shouldn't be under too much of an effort because all of those three are in the peloton but we do have a breakaway of 19 riders a big breakaway it uh, took a while to open up the gap in fact the main field for a long time chased them down at 45 seconds then all of a sudden the gap started to expand to three minutes but I think on the front of the main field film we've got a little bit of punishment time trial training for team Rabobank because they've missed the break this afternoon and the team manager has them sitting at the front of the main field doing the pacemaking but not actually reducing the gap well the thing is we've got 14 teams that represented up front of the 20 teams in the race. Aston have got one man in here just to keep a watch on things. That's uh, Yaroslav Popovic. Uh, David Mill is here for Garmin Slipstream. Uh, Savello have missed out completely, and so too, as Paul has said, has Rabobank. Uh, we've just been through the feed where we're running ahead of the fastest schedule at the moment. They got through 45 kilometers in the first hour today. And I'm not too sure that they won't gradually stretch it out. Rabobank is holding them at the moment, not closing in on them. And I think when they get fed up of chasing, it might start to run. Well, uh, just looking at the riders in the breakaway, the best place rider, in fact, is 20th overall, and that's Sylvain Chavanel. I'm feeling he's looking for 27 minutes to try and uh, catch up with Alberto Contador, so that's not likely to happen. Well, there are seven uh, uh, riders in this breakaway of all one stage in the Tour de France. One of those is Cadell Evans, albeit on the disqualification of Alexander Vinokurov a couple of years ago. But yes, I did say Cadell Evans, and he was a contender and a big favourite at the start of this race in Monaco. He lost contact really in the team time trial with his team Silence Lotto on stage four, and he's never been involved since, and he's lingering now nearly 40 minutes behind Contador. Well, apparently this morning, he came out really wanting to race, and his team manager said, get in a breakaway, and he's got in that breakaway. So we'll see what happens. He seems to be getting his head back into gear because I think he's been quite depressed by the situation all three weeks of the tour. Well, if the breakaway does such survive, Phil, he's got a very good chance of getting himself a victory because there's a very nasty second category climb at about 20 kilometres to go, and that would be a great launch pad for somebody in that leading group of 19 riders to get clear to the finish. Glimpse there of David Miller on the Garmin Slipstream team. He had a good time try yesterday. He got the better of his countryman, Bradley Wiggins. That wasn't the way it was supposed to have been yesterday. All right, we're underway with stage 19. It's a lovely day out here. We'll take a break and see you in a moment. Saunders Nature Valley, the place that inspires her to go faster and slower. Elk Mountains, Colorado. Where's yours? 100% natural Nature Valley granola bars that taste nature intended. Choosing a car is like trying on a dress. As soon as you slip into it, you know it's the one. But you still turn around to see the back, because let's face it, you want them to hate to see you go, but love to watch you leave. Introducing the all new Cadillac CTS Sport Wagon. Lollipop, lollipop, oh lolly, 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 lollipop. Boom, 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 boom. Attention, select Dell Minis come standard with Verizon Wireless Mobile Broadband built in. So you can surf the web, check email, chat, and download on the go. All on America's largest and most reliable 3G network. I call a lollipop. Treat yourself to the 10-inch mini with your choice of six colors. Starting at just $3.99. Dell, yours is here. This is Testosterone Theater on Versus, and this is August. Sweaty, steamy. August. Awesome sports flicks. August. With Van Damme. Hiya. How'd he do that? Hiya. Oh, no, he can't see. Uh -huh. And Sunday Aggression with Mick Screamy. Yeah. 
and Miss Steamy. Yeah. Go back to the miners with men in lingerie. Makes you uncomfortable. Watch it anyway! It's Man Golf with Costner and Cheech. Hey. Swing in water, swing in water, swing after swing. Why won't Cheech stop him? Watch it all on Testosterone Theater on Versus. Hey. New Stouffer's Corner Bistro Stromboli. Seasoned Italian style crust filled with delicious meats and real cheese. Because getting ready for a good dinner hey. doesn't always mean setting the table. New from Stouffer's. Okay, at the General, it's really easy to buy auto insurance online. Just log on to thegeneral.com for an instant quote. You'll get a great low rate, a low monthly payment, and a down payment as low as $59. Don't get caught driving uninsured or paying for more insurance than you need. So, log on to thegeneral.com right now. <laughs> Too big? Just a little. The best car insurance rates online. Go to the General and save some time. Right now at Lowe's, get 10% off Energy Star products throughout the store. And you can even ask for an additional 10% off all your purchases or special financing for 12 months when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's, let's build something together. The 2009 Tour de France on Versus is brought to you by Nature Valley Granola Bars, the taste nature intended, and by Cadillac. Welcome back to the Tour de France. We're in the department of the Drum at the moment, heading for the Ardèche. We're not quite there yet. Some 82 kilometers still to race, just on 50 miles. Cadell Evans on the front here has finally got into a breakaway and is looking to win today. They're having to work hard, though, to pull away from the peloton. No, they certainly are, because the front end of the main field is pretty much under the control of Team Rabobank, who are one of uh, the few teams that didn't manage to get representation into this leading group. A number of teams have got multiple riders in there. The strongest represented team is Team Case de Pagne from Spain. They've got David Arroyo, Jose Ivan Guterres, and also a winner of the state of a stage in the Tour de France this year, Luis Leon Sanchez. AG2R once led the team race and the race individually. They also have three men in here, but they would have to win by seven and a half half minutes uh, for them to take the lead away from Astana who have quite a commanding lead in the team race right now as well of course in the individual race and we get the team results by adding together three riders times and with three riders in the break they make quite a coup today but I don't think they'll win by seven and a half minutes and that's what they need if they want to take the, the team lead away from Team Astana, who is solidly at the top of that competition. And a man solidly in uh, the lead in the green jersey points classification is Tor Hushoff. He now has a 30-point lead over Mark Cavendish. And, of course, he has the red jersey for being the most aggressive rider. He does, red number. Well, red uh, number. fitting to see Tor Hushoff there on Team Savella, because today we have the Geico cam inside the car of the team. That's Alex Vega, who is team director of Savello today. And during the race, we'll pop into the car, and I think we'll be able to even speak to him uh, as he drives along. He, we've watched him feeding his riders today. He actually thought earlier that some of the breakaways would get caught, but at the moment, they're absolutely flying along, racing through faster than expected time. And it's all down to these boys, the Rabobanks. I think Paul's right. Uh, they are doing penalty training for not putting a man in such a large breakaway, and are having to chase now all of them. And it sort of gives Team Astana an easy ride. Very easy ride for Astana, they're quite happy. They're also represented in that leading group with Yaroslav Popovich. But for Team Rabobank, they really have missed out, Phil, more than uh, just not having a man in the breakaway, because this is an ideal kind of stage for their man, Oscar Freire. Yes, I saw him in there. He'd probably be a little bit frustrated at the moment. We do have that small second category climb near the end, and that could be where they'll springboard away. Just looking at Yushi Vakanen's heart rate, 125 beats a minute at the moment. Uh, but 26 and a half miles an hour, that gives you an idea of just uh, what it's like in the main field. The main field are not hanging around. They're not giving too much freedom to that leading group of 19 riders. Some interesting riders got into that group because David Miller's got in here for a Garmin slipstream. And the guy on the back is a very good sprinter. That's Daniele Bernati of Team Liquigas. Not an easy run-up for the sprint today. By the way, don't forget, a Cadillac ride of your life sweepstakes. Uh, go to versus.com forward slash ride of your life. You could win a trip to two for two to the 2010 Tour de France, a Cervelo S2 bicycle, also win a yellow jersey, a polka dot jersey that will be signed by us like the ones we use in the Cadillac performance. Today's word is a green jersey, so that's your code word to go on board now. As we pass the beautiful sunflowers here, 
It seems very strange to be turning south again on the final as we approach the final weekend of the Tour de France, going back into the area of the sunflowers and into the hot weather again. Uh, but we're going to, it's an unusual end to the Tour this year with the climb of Mont Ventoux tomorrow. A boiling cold, and I think it'll be down that way as well. And uh, then we'll all be heading up towards uh, Paris. A long drive Saturday night for everybody concerned. Well, looking at the leading group here of 19, Phil, they're actually starting to lose a little bit of time. It's uh, tipping down towards the two and a half minutes. But uh, although we're looking at this stage, which is a transitional stage, I think everybody is extremely excited about tomorrow's stage. And um, I'm hearing through the grapevine that we may well be looking at having a one-hour commercial-free show. And it takes one hour to go up, the, up to the summit of the Mont Ventoux. So that's going to be some pretty exciting television. Well, our whole show will be four hours, but you're right. Uh, the last hour, totally commercial free as we enjoy the climb of Mont Ventoux, which is, as the organizers always planned it, I believe, a big showdown for everybody. I don't think it'll worry Alberto Contador, but as we said earlier, the race for second place is on, and there's probably six riders who still believe they can grab second on the podium. It's going to be a massive battlefield because uh, there's not very much between Andy Schleck and going all the way down to Andreas Cloden. They're only separated by about an, a minute and a half, and which is not a lot on the slopes of Mont Ventoux. Looking down here at the church of Saint-Jean, built in 1862 in the shape of a Greek cross on the debris of the old parish church of saint andé It's got a porch-type bell tower with the roof flanked with four pinnacles surmounted by a spire burning a huge cockle. Can't see it from this angle, then. Oh, yes, I can. There it is, right on the front. Well spotted. <laughs> cock a doodle -doo. Well, for many people, of course, it's still quite early in the morning back home in the USA, so you probably saw the cockle before I did today. Anyway, the break is still on, but it hasn't been allowed to fly yet, so it could be an interesting finish in a moment. This race is you're hitting the most extreme conditions you ever hit in, in a race. I can't even describe how bad it is. It is the roughest road you could ever imagine riding a bike over. Yeah, the bikes are unbelievable. I don't know how I raced through Roubaix before without it. We think it's nice to have stock bikes in the races so people can see how good those bikes really are. Exceptional. They've, they've surprised me again. If human achievement can be determined not by speed or strength, but by character, then it's easy to see who the most amazing athletes really are. Be a fan of dignity, acceptance, and the human race. Volunteer, coach, or compete in Special Olympics. We need to send an expert. A walking, talking, know-it-all expert. A guru. How about Wu? Wu will do. Where to? First stop, Peru. Then send Wu to Kathmandu. What's next? Timbuktu. And area code 212. So Timbuktu, Kathmandu, Peru, and 212? All by half past two. Not a problem. Need an expert? Push a button. That's the human network effect. Learn more at cisco.com slash newways. The World Championships begin August 15th. Part of Versus Red, White, Black, and Blue Summer. What do Georgetown... Idaho Springs and Empire Colorado have in common Clear Creek County. So why do I go there? The fabulous dining to shop for unique items and just to get away from it all on the numerous hiking trails. Discover all that the Colorado Rockies has to offer just 28 minutes from Denver. Join us at clearcreekcounty.org. Clear Creek County, nearby and near perfect. On July 28th. You know each other. <laughs> you haven't experienced Fast and Furious until you've seen it on Blu-ray High Def. Perfect picture. Perfect sound. Fast and Furious on the two-disc special edition for a limited time only, July 28th. Promotional consideration provided by experienced gift company Cloud9 Living. Give the unexpected and create the memory of a lifetime with a Fast and Furious experience from Cloud9Living.com. Angel Torres, unbeaten in five years. Can undefeated Brian Bowles pose a threat? 
Ask his last seven victims. Torres versus Bulls. Live Sunday, August 9th. Only on Versus. Well, let's have a look at Bicycle Magazine stages you can't miss. And one you must not miss is tomorrow. Remember, the last hour will be commercial free. Montelli Martin, Mont Bon 2, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Visit bicycling.com for exclusive daily tour commentary and analysis from cycling's biggest names, interactive, interactive stage maps, and much more. It's the big showdown on Mont Bon 2 tomorrow here on Versus. Well, within the peloton, you know, there are certain rules you obey and certain rules you don't know about, but the peloton has their own little world of unwritten rules. So let's learn a little bit more about those. There are a lot of unwritten rules in, in the sport. You know, it's the things where you don't really know until you do something wrong and then, you know, one of the older guys will come swooping down and, and block, give you a blast for, for doing something wrong. Doesn't seem like anyone's really in charge. Don't get in the way of the team pulling. As a matter of fact, I asked if someone was in charge once and they said, I don't know. <laughs> Big one is uh, I've actually done, I've broken this rule is attacking in the feed zone. Unwritten rules of the Peloton, don't chase your own teammate down. Never attacking the feed zone. The team chasing has it under control. They really don't like it if you attack again to try to go up to it. Never attack when the eye jersey is stopped for a nature call. I have to stop for a, for a piece. I, I, I expect the other guys not to be attacking. Don't be that guy when the GC leader flats and you attack. Always allow the race leader a little bit of respect. The biggest rule is just to have respect for each other. I guess there's a bit of a gentleman sport. It's a risk giving, taking, respect thing. And nobody is helping now break up the line of Rabobank and Cervelo, who are trying to work back to those leaders now. 19 riders clear. The best man in the breakaway, by the way, is Sylvain Chavanel, the French rider. And he is 27 minutes behind Alberto Contador. So there's no reason for Astana to whip up the chase today as we uh, continue on now towards the finish in Obana. Well, it's a lovely day to enjoy the Tour de France on its final Friday of the 2009 event. Two and a half minutes, uh, a lot of work and sweat and toil being put in at the head of the peloton by just one team just now. And they're holding. And so how long will they be able to keep this pressure on to try and get this breakaway back? It's a hard day to have to work as well, Phil, because of the temperature and the road surface. Uh, it really is a difficult route the riders are facing up to this afternoon. I would think a lot of riders in the main field would like to have an easy day because some riders, especially the riders in the top 10 in the overall classification, know that tomorrow is a massive showdown for all concerned, especially with the ascent up to the top of the Mont Ventoux. Well, it really is for the spectators on the flat roads, only a fleeting glimpse of the peloton because these boys are not easing up. Lawrence 10 down with all the scars he collected in the Pyrenees still bandaged up as he's now being helped with Milram riders as well because they've surprisingly missed out on the break no Cervelo's obvious yet I thought they would have also put a man in on the chase well Phil you mentioned before the average speed of the first hour of the race was at 45 kilometers an hour the second hour of the race has now just been run off at almost 49 kilometers oh. now so nobody in this bike race this afternoon can be accused of hanging around well when you're looking at uh, what well, 95 kilometers covered in the first two hours I take my hats off to just Rabobank because largely it's been these boys who have kept that race in touch with a breakaway that really the yellow jersey would allow to run out to 15 minutes and not worry about it. Yeah, surprisingly, two French teams missing the, the move this afternoon and that really does uh, shock me a bit because Team Francaise de Jeux as well as uh, B-Box Boy Telecom have missed out and they're a team that normally are always present when they see uh, breakaways going on these transitional stages. Monte Léger for the riders on the front of the peloton at the moment and Beaumont Les Valences for the riders in the peloton. 226 the gap, 71 kilometers to go to the finish. It goes on to narrow roads, uh, very undulating and quite pretty roads uh, down between uh, Priva and then on to Aubenas. And just before the finish we have this good 
very good surface to expose climb it's only second category there's a lot of people on it uh, as they run over the top then they descend down to the finish at Obana which is actually a hilltop town we're finishing just below its ramparts yeah, I don't think, I really think, Phil, the only reason we're not finishing in town is because the streets <laughs> are so narrow, they can't get all the infrastructure in to bring these pictures from all the way around the world. The main field now in the town of beaumont les valence and there you can just see the clock tower, again, medieval clock tower in the heart, in the middle of town. In fact, uh, some of this town dates back to 1300. Well, the crowd enjoying cheering the peloton by, probably shouting at them, hey, you guys are two minutes, 20 seconds back right now. Paste upon on the back. And there, the Rabobank settling into what could be a long chase here. They're still uh, doing the lion's share of the pacemaking. Milram just sending up one rider. You can just see the yellow jersey of Contador. He's riding at the front just to keep an eye on things. He's not interested in the breakaway at all. Well, one man also in the peloton is on Garmin Slipstream. That's Danny Pate. He's having a great Tour de France. And we'll learn more on him after the break. Going to repeat something is way easier than doing something for the first time. Venturing into an area I've never been before. looking for something that would be real, and that's why I chose eHarmony, because it's much deeper. Only eHarmony finds you deep, meaningful matches based on 29 proven dimensions of compatibility. I never would have met Tara without eHarmony. She's incredibly intelligent. She has a smile that lights up the room. I don't know how I could love her any more than I do right now, but tomorrow I'm gonna love her more. Get started at eHarmony.com today and review all your matches for free. Buckle up, everybody, because we're taking a ride that can strain your relationships and hurt your pride. It's the credit roller coaster, and as you can see, it kind of bites. So sing the lyrics with me. When your deck goes up, your score goes down. When you pay a little off, it goes the other way around. It's just the same for everybody, every boy and girl. The credit roller coaster makes you want to hurl. So throw your hands in the air and wave them around like a wannabe frat boy trying to get down. And bring them right back to where your laptop's at. Log on to FreeCreditReport.com. Free credit score and report with enrollment and triple advantage. get in people's faces. I've been doing this for 18 years. I deserve the respect just like anybody else. Boy, am I mad a lot? Yeah, but I'm mad because every second of my life is put into how to be faster and how to win. This isn't miniature golf. We're out there with 1,500 pounds of metal around us, strapped down to it like a missile. Some girls once prom, I went to the racetrack. Wow, wow, wow. It's the WOW sale. Get your WOW at Trek Dealers. WOW prices on bikes. WOW savings on accessories and gear. Save big now through the end of the tour and win. Win Lance's bike. Win my bike. You can win my bike and other great Trek prizes. Scratch and win every day online or at your local dealer. WOW. 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 Every day. Save big. Win big now. July 17th through the 26th at Trek Dealers. Get your WOW. Tonight... Go catch more than a movie. Or make plans to chart the uncharted. Go tackle nature. Just be ready for it to tackle back. Save on the gear to get it done at Bass Pro Shops. Like Redhead Canvas Utility Shorts for only $12.94. And Thermocell Mosquito Repellent for just $14.94. Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Make plans now for the Bass Pro Shops Fall Hunting Classic.
check in on the Travelers American standings over the boys here. We've only lost Levi Leipheimer very sadly on unlucky stage 13, but Lance Armstrong is still in a podium position in third. Van der Velde, fourth last year, sitting eighth this time. Hincapi with his injured shoulder is 22nd. Dave Zabriskie, 60th with Danny Pate, 139. And the sprinter Tyler Farrow looking forward to Paris and the sprint there, 155. Talking of Danny Pate, let's check in now. He's our star motorcycles athlete profile of the day. been racing for a while now. I'm not really a young guy or a newcomer really anymore. The 2008 season was kind of a, a lot of new things, a lot of first times for me. Danny Pate on the Garmin Chipotle team from the United States of America. Riding uh, the Tour de France for the first time in his career is probably wondering to himself, what am I doing here? Last year when I rode in a breakaway all, all day at the Tour, it was just an amazing day for me. Yeah. Some people don't realize how hard it is to get into one of those breaks. Look at Danny Pate here. Well, he's strong. He is extremely strong. He's riding well and he's riding sensibly. He's waiting for the moves. He's waiting for the accelerations. We kind of did our thing out there and uh, we're lucky that the other teams had other tactics that they were, weren't so interested in us. There's all kinds of things that can play into a race like that. And, you know, emotions. Tell you what, I take my hat off very sincerely to Danny Pate, who doesn't have the reputation of a climber, but he's responded. When it comes right down to it, it's just another bike race, and uh, even though it's the biggest race in the world. And a terrific result for Danny Pate. An all-day breakaway, and the USA rider gets third. Going to repeat something's way easier than doing something for the first time. Venturing into an area I've never been before is a big deal, you know? It's, I don't know how to put it in perspective. He didn't know what he was getting himself into or what he was doing. He just, he was just, he was going with the flow last year. It's the Danny Pate that we all know that he can be. I mean, he's an, an incredible talent. I don't think he realizes how good he really is a lot of times. And it's like a reoccurring thing. You really want to see Danny just believe in himself and come through. Star Motorcycles athlete profile, Danny Pate is a great bike rider. He finished last year's Tour de France in 93rd position and he's well on the way to another good finish this time around. Looking here now at the leaders of the race, David Miller on the front. We've got a bit of a split here and it must have been started by the speed of David Miller as he's revved up at the front. Somebody's left the door open in the middle and they're trying to get this breakaway smaller. They know that the chase is coming. 154 to the peloton. So Miller's decided something's got to happen here and he's pushing a split in the breakaway. 154 to the bunch, uh, going out now to 158. It had to happen, the breakaway getting a little bit lethargic perhaps and Miller wants to reduce the numbers. Well, that's probably the only way this breakaway might succeed, Phil, because I think what was happening in this group of 19 riders were all of a sudden we were starting to get passengers, riders who weren't too keen to uh, do the pacemaking at the front and sitting at the back, and that demoralizes a group and it disorganizes a group, and that, I think, is why we've seen the move coming from Leonardo Duque, trying to split four or five riders off the front. There's one of the barges heading down the Rhone here, 200 feet long, those barges, by the way, as we're watching the peloton here. Sweep around to the right, a very nice picture indeed from our helicopter. But I think the work is being done. I take my hat off now to Rabobank. They're very annoyed they missed the breakaway. It's been an unlucky tour for them in many, many ways. They won the Tour of Italy this year, so they worked hard for the race leader there at the end of the day. But here, they've been on the defensive. Uh, Popovic has made the breakaway with Miller. Jose Luis Arieta is there as well. And there is Duque, the sprinter. They won't want to take him to the line, but he may have a problem on the hill. I would have expected David Miller uh, to try and go on the hill if we ever get to the hill ahead of the race. Well, it was very clever the way these riders managed to split this group off the front end of it because it was all a question of trying to uh, move clear. The first man to make the move from this group of 19, Phil, was in fact uh, Leonardo Duque. He felt, I think, that with this slight incline that they went up a little while back, that it was a good point to get himself across the move. He was joined pretty rapidly by Leonardo Duque, and they formed a two-man group off the front. And once they saw that it was dangerous, Jose Ivan Gutierrez came charging across the gap, and uh, that's him in the black and red jersey there. And he, in fact, uh, saw that this was a good point to reduce the size of that breakaway and make it into a much more manageable, workmanlike group. Well, Case de Pong got the three top riders in this breakaway, and it's up to Jose Ivan Gutierrez now to do something here. Leonardo Duque is the cofferdist sprinter. 
Jose Luis Arieta, AG2R, Miller and Popovich have got themselves about 11 seconds on the rest. Now it'll be interesting to see if this can repair itself here because the peloton are not letting that break away out of uh, reach, I don't think. Just look at the speed of them. We'll take a break. Rejoin us in a moment. Watchmen, the director's cut on Blu-ray. Evil must be punished. With 24 minutes of new footage, it's the Watchmen you didn't see in theaters, including a unique walk behind the scenes with the director while the movie plays. Come to get me. By the director's cut on Blu-ray. Fearnet uncovers the dark side of Comic-Con. For the latest movies, shows, and stars. Is it cool or what? Go to Fearnet.com starting July 23rd and get your con on. Just another perfect day. I think I'll walk this way with the trees. I do sing. I'm feeling part of everything. And all my troubles seem to fade away. Skies look brighter. I the hybrid for everyone is here. The insight. Designed and priced for us all from Honda. If you're driving a car that's under 15 years old with less than 200,000 miles, stay tuned to learn how you can save thousands of dollars on car repairs with an extended warranty from U.S. Fidelis. This is not the same warranty car dealers offer. It's better, costs less, and it's customized just for you. You pick your own coverage amount, deductible, and payment plan. You even pick the repair shop. And we pick up the bill, and we'll pay the shop directly. So you don't have to pay up front, then wait to be reimbursed. How much can you save? Plenty. It cost almost $1,300 to repair an air conditioner condenser, but the owner didn't pay a cent. U.S. Fidelis covered it 100%. It cost over $3,700 to replace a transmission, and U.S. Fidelis paid it all. The choice is yours. You can pay your repair bills yourself, or you can let us pay them for you. To find out more, call 1-800-367-3985 for a free five-minute quote. That's 1-800-367-3985. 1-800-367-3985. Call now. You think the fans on the road to Paris are crazy? <laughs> Try Jersey Joker on for size. It's Fanarchy on Versus, an uprising of real sports fans. Seven times you won. That's enough. He's got nothing to prove. From their webcams to your TV. Fanarchy on Versus. Don't forget the Road ID Tour Challenge gives every cyclist the chance to test themselves against pros like Lance Armstrong, Versus and MapMyRide.com. They've teamed up so you can virtually ride in the Tour de France from wherever you are. It's a contest that gives you a chance to win tens of thousands of dollars in prizes every day, including three bikes in that random drawings. So as we look down the road here, we're now searching to see if that split remains on. I thought I'd just seen uh, Nicholas Roach and Cadell Evans try to bridge the gap, but we never got any more pictures of it. So as we're looking across the road now, there's the uh, throws at the front here. There is Nicholas Roach, so he's got back in the chase group. He's been picked up, so too Cadell Evans, I think. A lot of counter moves here. The pace is really hot today. Looking down the road, we look at the leaders with David Miller. They're not round that corner now, so this breakaway He's really going to have to ride hard for the minute, but they might well pull away. Popovic, uh, Miller, Ariete, Gutierrez and Duque, the sprinter. They'll have to get rid of him if, if, they're not, uh, if they're expecting to win the stage. He's a very fast sprinter. Typical move by David Miller. They're free to fly because they've lost time now. The main field won't be too concerned about them. Around about 27 seconds at the moment. Well, what drives your inspiration in the Tour de France? And... Uh, we believe sometimes it can be family, so here's the Honda insight into what drives your inspiration. I draw my inspiration from uh, my daughter. <laughs> I just found out two days ago that I'm having a daughter. That is my new source of inspiration. My wife is a huge source of inspiration. She's put a lot on the line for me. I think about her all the time when I'm on the road. 
Dessa's role in my success is huge. She put a lot of her time and made a lot of sacrifices in, into my career. Then I was a completely different rider. That's really where my, my career began and my steady improvement began is because I had someone who understands what it takes to be a dedicated cyclist and to make all those sacrifices, and she is behind me 100%. And as the Honda insides, yes, you need a partner around to support you because it's not always a happy time being a pro cyclist, as Levi Leipheimer sadly has found out. A broken wrist for him in the Tour de France, but he'll be back next year, and I suspect alongside Lance Armstrong on the new Radio Shack team. More on that as the season unfolds, I guess, as we look down this stunning countryside today. No mountains on the horizon, just a few ripples as the riders go towards that rather heavy cloud up there, so maybe... Maybe the sun will give way to a storm. Oh, my goodness me, that is black. Well, they're racing straight into the eye of the storm, Paul, whichever way you look at it. And 2-3, uh, so the move by Miller, Duque, and these five riders has pulled away a little bit from the peloton. It's much more a successful working group now, Phil. There were, I think, too many passages in that group of 19, too many riders prepared to sit at the back end of the group and uh, take a free ride if they could up until the final climb of the day. Now that they've reduced the numbers to five, you can see every one of these riders is quite prepared to do the pacemaking, even Yaroslav Popovich, who theoretically doesn't have to work, but Popovich is clever enough to realize that by working with this group, they've got more of a chance of pulling clear of the chasers. Well, this is the difference uh, with the Astana team of Lance Armstrong and the old Discovery Channel uh, days, and uh, before that US Postal, teammates didn't get chance at winning stages. Lance was winning the race, and that's all it was all about. Uh, but this team uh, seems to be able to fire from a different quarter deck, and Popovich is in the breakaway now. He's lost enough time, 39 minutes behind overall. He'd be out to win for the team, and that really would be a bonus from a surprise quarter. Yes, but uh, Popovic uh, has, has won a stage in the Tour de France before. It was a long, hot day in the saddle. Uh, again, not too far away from this part of France either because he won into Carcassonne back in 2006 at the end of a very long breakaway like this. That beautiful wall city, which, uh, by the way, on Bastille Day, boasts the best fireworks display in France. This is the Barrage de Charme here. And the riders get a quick view of it before they continue to race on. It is the reservoir which uh, deviates the Rhone in the canal section here. It's the only one to be situated on the river's right bank, by the way. And the reason for that is just to keep the levels of the canals uh, right up to uh, scratch as we now go over this river and head into the department of the Ardèche. Yes, and this is where we'll stay today. You'll see the scenery change a little bit. It gets a little bit undulating now after this, once we cross the main Rhone itself and uh, culminates with a second category climb, which uh, once they're over the top, they've got just 16 kilometers, 10 miles uh, to race right down to the finish. It's quite narrow on the run-in today because the villages literally seem to go right to the side of the road and they're gonna have to go through the middle of them. So, tortuous finish to the day. Yes, sir, but once we start to get into the Ardèche, the roads change again, Phil. It's been fairly flat over the middle part of the, the course when we went through the region of the Drome. Now into the Ardèche, we start to get lots of little undulations which will start to bite and make it a little bit heavy on the riders' legs. They've got the gap, that leading group of five now, and uh, I make the time difference around about 40 seconds, so they will lose the morale in that group of 14 behind. They will more than likely now get picked up by the main field. Well, they might lose the morale when they see the storm, which is about to dump on them, I think, because it is uh, very, very black. It's fine where we are, uh, but it's very, very black. The stretch, though, still holding in the peloton, a minute 48 to the main field. Well, there's the barrage for the peloton, so there's not much in it, is it? 1 minute 48 seconds since the leaders crossed this bridge. The chase is on now, and the rain might have a part to play as well as we head towards Obernat. this weekend, Tommy? I have been to the edge and back. Excuse me? The Edge Pizza from Pizza Hut is back. Pizza? is about toppings. The Edge has no other crust. The Edge is toppings. Like keep toppings going. Like keep right on Taste going. Taste the Edge. My family let go. go of your crust, my friend. Brother, sister. I have been to the Edge and back. Join me. Go to the Edge. Get a medium for just $9.99. Now you're eating America's favorite pizza. Pizza Hut.
to 10,000 Hilton Honors bonus points. Real value from your friends at Hampton. I gotta get my car insured. Just point and click, point and click, point and click, point and click. When you need auto insurance right now, log on to thegeneral.com. You'll get an instant quote with no personal information required and a down payment as low as $59. You can also print your own proof of insurance form all online in just a few minutes. Piece of cake. The best car insurance rates in town call 1 800 General now. Lollipop, lollipop, oh lolly, 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 lollipop. Boom, 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 boom. Attention, select Dell Minis come standard with Verizon Wireless Mobile Broadband built in. So you can surf the web, check email, chat, and download on the go. All on America's largest and most reliable 3G network. I call her lollipop. Treat yourself to the 10-inch mini with your choice of six colors. Starting at just $3.99. Dell, yours is here. Fearnet uncovers the dark side of Comic-Con. For the latest movies, shows, and stars. Is it cool or what? Go to Fearnet.com starting July 23rd and get your con on. There are moments in life when there are no limits, no boundaries, no walls. That the rules of gravity just don't apply. Because there is no statute of limitations on greatness. Today I'm Stuart O'Grady and I'll ride a Specialized SL3. I think the new Specialized is just a really smooth ride, very comfortable on all the terrains and the mountains. It's really rigid and stiff for the sprint finishes. It's good all across the boards and the cobbles. It's been fantastic in the classics. And especially as we found out in the Tour de France this year for the descent. It's been a really great bike on the handling-wise, so really happy all around. And we're back with the Tour de France. Now, there's what I was explaining earlier. We're getting into the undulations now. Once we cross that river into the Ardèche, this is a beautiful department of France, by the way. It is handmade, if you like, for cycling because the roads are plentiful, plenty of little back roads, narrow roads, and you can really enjoy riding a bike in this part. And the weather pretty much guaranteed at this time of the year. These are the leaders now. They charged away. They did a good move there to split up that big group of 19. Now we've got Popovic, Miller, Arieta, Gutierrez and Duque, the Colombian rider who is strange enough a sprinter more than a climber. And they're starting to move towards that sprint up the road. Well, Miller has had a terrific Tour de France, I think, this year, Paul, along with Bradley Wiggins. He's been very, very solid on the same team as Wiggins. He must have been a bit surprised to beat Wiggins in the time trial yesterday. That really wasn't part of the plan. Well, it wasn't part of the plan, but in the individual time trial, you ride your own race on your own against the clock. And before the start, Brad, uh, David Miller tipped his own teammate to win the race. He was so confident that Bradley Wiggins had the form to be the fastest man in that individual time trial. But things go wrong, the wind changes, and I think what happened for the riders who went off towards the end, Phil, there was a rising headwind, which really yeah. defeated a lot of them. Is Popovic taking a drink as we approaching Privat. So these are the riders now. They're, they're completely uh, annoyed with each other. They've missed the move. They're fuming, in fact, and they're going to have to freewheel away for the peloton. Well, let's go back to the start line this morning because Robbie Ventura was down there and he found Dave Zabriskie of Garmin Slipstream. He's our Cisco insider. Dave, the last week of the tour has been very good for you. Been getting in breakaways, had a great time trial yesterday, been working your butt off for Bradley and Christian. Um, how has this tour been overall for you? Uh, it's been good. It's uh, blown by. It's gone by really fast, actually. It's been exciting to have uh, Brad do so well, and uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, be a part of it. Big day today, and a good good stage in terms of uh, your, your abilities. Um, Von 2 is an important race to your team. Will you be resting today, or will they give you the freedom to uh, make the breakaway and possibly go for the stage win? Uh, everyone on the team except really Brad and Christian uh, have the go-ahead for the break. So that's, I mean, everyone tries to get in it, and uh, most likely it'll get to the line today. So it's going to be a really aggressive start. I'm not sure uh, 
what the future holds for me today. <laughs> you found your legs in the, in the third week of this Tour de France. Um, any reason why all of a sudden it seems like uh, the legs have come good and, and you're climbing with, with pretty much the leaders? I don't know. I can't explain the body's physiology. Sometimes it just uh, it comes in waves and sometimes you plan it out and it works and sometimes you plan it out and it doesn't work when you want it to work and uh, I'm just having a good wave right now. Well, one thing's for sure, while Dave rests in the peloton today, it's teammate David Miller who's got into the early breakaway and forced the split here with Duque and now looking very, very good for the likelihood of a win. And as we keep uh, going back to the Rhone, which is used for transport, uh, like all of the canals and rivers of Europe here, another barge, that's got no engine, that one is being pushed by the little boat at the back as we pull back to the race here in the Tour de France. It is quite crazy to think of how this Tour de France has unfolded, Phil, because in fact it was two weeks ago we actually crossed the Rhone for the first time yeah. when we were heading down towards Barcelona in the southern part of France, and here we are crossing it again. Well, we just passed the hotel I stayed in on the long drive from the United Kingdom to Monaco. And it's a one and a half day drive from back over there. Anyway, we're heading south. Unusual direction at this stage of the Tour de France. But we're heading for Mont Ventoux tomorrow. And it's going to be a terrific day on that mountain. They're expecting 400,000 people on Ventoux tomorrow. So uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere. It's going to be a great atmosphere and it's also going to be a great race, I would have to say, Phil, because, um, you know, the important thing about the Mont Ventoux is it's going to decide, probably not going to affect, I don't think, Alberto Contador at all, but it's going to decide who will finish second and third on the podium alongside the man from Astana. It is indeed. Well, the gap has come down significant, significantly. 128 is the peloton now. That's the spread of the race. Uh, Dave Miller has made a good move here. There's no question about that. He's got some strong riders with him, and they're all working well, including Yaroslav Popovic and uh, Jose Ivan Gutierrez, Arieta, Duque, all want this breakaway to succeed today. And if they can just get into the ripples of the last 20 kilometres, uh, with a couple of minutes, and then they've got a real chance. But the chase group itself is in total disarray, and they've more or less resigned themselves now. It's uh, just back into the peloton for them. No point in chasing now. Now everybody ties down. A number of teams have come back, no longer have a man in the break. There's Nicholas Roach gone back. Well done to the Rabo Banks. They never gave up their cause today, and it looks like they're going to continue now. They have to continue. They're still looking for one and a half minutes to pull back that break of five riders. The man on the front, uh, Juan Antonio Fletcher, will do a lot of pacemaking, Phil, uh, even maybe a little bit more than anyone else in that group because he will be believing in his team captain. His team captain is Oscar Ferreira. Ferreira always comes up with the win on the big occasions, and he's won the World Championships three times, which is really quite remarkable. Well, the finishing to Obana, I can't believe the organisers expected the whole peloton to charge into town. It is a little bit of a risky one. Quite narrow, uh, especially in the last five or six kilometres. At the front of the peloton has been rubber bank for most of the time, 85% of the workload. Just a little bit of help from Milram. Nobody else contributing at all uh, to this chase. You see the two blue jerseys of Milram there. Well, Miram, one of the teams that missed out, uh, but they do have uh, their very good sprinter, Gerard Cholik, who himself, I think, could possibly get over mm -hmm. the climb as well as Oscar Ferreira. Yep. Yes, that's a very good point, actually. Uh, Cholik also needs a result here. He used to be on the same side as Mark Cavendish. I think there might have been a clash of sprinting prowess there, so he's moved across to Milram this season. There's the peloton, we're all into the Ardèche now, and this race far from decided today as the five men keep running. We'll take a break. The inherent value of a Range Rover Sport easily handles the ups and downs of sand, mud, and the economy. Rover Sport, the luxury that's more than a luxury. Get 10% off Energy Star products throughout the store. And you can even ask for an additional 10% off all your purchases or special financing for 12 months when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's, let's build something together. This Tuesday. You haven't experienced Fast and Furious until you've seen it on Blu-ray High Def. Perfect picture. Perfect sound. Fast and Furious. Own the two discs for a limited time only. Two 
Remember when the only place you could win on a game show was on a game show? Now you can stay home for your chance to win big with Big Saturday Night on GSN. Every Saturday this summer, you'll catch two great new shows. Plus, play along with Big Money Games, paying out a million dollars in cash and prizes all summer long. Go to GSN.com using your Comcast high-speed internet or call our live show using your Comcast digital voice service. Stay in and you could win with GSN and Comcast on Big Saturday Night. Every Saturday night starting at 8 all summer long on GSN. Denver Coliseum comes an event where tickets start at $20. It's World Wrestling Entertainment. See the game Triple H in a battle against the Viper Randy Orton for the WWE Championship. Plus MVP Big Show and more. It's SummerSlam Tour in Denver. Tickets are on sale now starting at $20. WWE, the best value in entertainment. Yes, tomorrow is the penultimate day of the Tour de France here on Versus, and Montelimar to Mont Ventoux. This is one stage you must not miss. Uh, tomorrow we come at the earlier time of 7 a.m. Eastern time, and of course you always have our nightly expanded coverage as well, starting at 8 Eastern, and we'll be giving you the last hour of this stage tomorrow, commercial-free as well. Every reason to watch the Tour de France here on Versus. As we continue to uh, move back to the race now, these boys are working hard, but they're not actually leaving the race behind just now. 1 minute 25. Miller's been doing the lion's share of the work here, 29%, along with Duque. They were the two that forced the break to split the field. Everybody else has gone back to the peloton now. Popovich is doing some work, but not as much as the others. He is a teammate, of course, of Alberto Contador. And this is the beautiful River Rhone here. As we course down the right-hand side now. Okadell Evans here, sitting in the peloton now and sliding towards the back. He made the move and uh, under normal circumstances that move would have gone all the way to the finish. But the Rabobank missed out and they were told to chase it down. I have to say it was not because of Cadell Evans' presence in that group that they no. chased it down. It was just chased down because Team Rabobank did not have a man at all in that breakaway on a course that suits uh, their team leader, Oscar Ferreira, and that's why they're still chasing. They have seemed to have locked it in now, though, Phil, because it, it came down quite quickly to one and a half minutes, but it hasn't started to go down anymore. No, the locked in, as you say, one minute, as we speak, it's gone down a second, one minute 23 at the moment. Uh, maybe Goodell is rather hoping now that this breakaway is brought back and to maybe plan another move on his own territory. The springboard is the, the hill, which comes uh, 10 miles or 16 kilometres from the finish. It is a fast climb, there's no doubt about that. It's not a steep climb, but it would, if run at high speed, it will split the field. Yes, it climbs up from the small town of uh, Fouzet at 148 kilometres. It climbs up uh, all in all, Phil, for pretty close to 10 kilometres. So it really is a little coal that I would have to say. And it will split the main field. A lot of the, the non-climbers will get left behind. But uh, because of the work that's being done here by uh, Team Rabobank, now with some more assistance, you may well see a, a massive attack on the early slopes of the climb. Well, Lamprey, because Spilak came back, he was in the breakaway. They're now driving the train at the front, so this breakaway may not get to the finish today. As they're running right along the banks of the Rhone just now, and I hope they keep to the left. Another reminder about our Cadillac uh, sweepstakes, uh, versus.com forward slash ride of your life. Chance to meet us on the tour next year for trip for two. The code word you'll need today to get on board is Green Jersey and enjoy the competition. Looking at the leaders, Miller still driving through here as they keep the pressure on. The AG2R rider is uh, Jose Luis Arrieta. There's the work, there's the position to go. Popovich, the best place, but already 39 minutes back of his teammate. Well, uh, Leonardo Duque is an interesting character. You don't normally see a sprinter from Colombia. When they're this small, they're usually mountain goats and they can fly over the hills. But this boy is not such a good climber, but he is a very, very good sprinter. No, he is, Phil. He's been a professional with Team Coffee since 2006, and he's won some pretty impressive races. In fact, he won himself a stage of the Tour of Spain a couple of years ago, although uh, this year he doesn't have any victories to his credit. Popovic, another man who seems to have refound himself since leaving the side of Cadell Evans after last year's brief visit. 
But into the spin point here now. Whether they'll spin, there's no reason to. This is Saint Julien on Saint Alban. We're looking as we arrive here at the spin point in Saint Julien on Saint Alban. That leaves 37 kilometers to run. There's the beauty of the Ardèche. The left hand side is the drone, the department of the drone. And the right hand side is where we are now. This is the department of the Ardèche. The small town of uh, Les Cabanes that the riders uh, are entering. They're going to take a right hand turn. They're going to head right into the heart of the Ardèche, as you mentioned, Phil. And the roads all of a sudden start to get that little bit more difficult. They're a little narrower. They're starting to get the undulations as we head out down towards the finishing line here in Aubenas. Down to the one minute marker when we look at the main field and it's still in fact uh, I noticed that just a few moments ago team uh, Lotto had sent a couple of riders up to the front end as well obviously because of the fact they no longer have Cadell Evans in the leading group we just missed catching them so they've gone forever now I'm afraid they've just taken off as the riders now get on to this section of road which takes them towards Priva and then onward this is actually the road now which runs down to the finishing line uh, but it gets a little bit twisty at times and apart from the actual climb which is uh, categorized at two there's plenty of other little lumps on this road so the racing should get quite interesting we'll take another break rejoins when your engine's running clean you feel it and pennzoil motor oil actively cleans out up to 15 percent of sludge the first time you use it so feel the clean not just oil pennzoil I didn't want anyone to know that I was secretly having someone else find someone for me. When you own your own business, there's no time to go out, so I went on eHarmony to let them find Mr. Right for me. Review your matches for free. eHarmony.com well, I was shopping for a new car. Which one's me? A cool convertible or an SUV? Too bad I didn't know my credit was whack because now I'm driving off the lot in a used subcompact. F-R-E-E, -E, that spells free. Creditreport.com, baby. Saw their ads on my TV. Thought about going but was too lazy. Now instead of looking fly and rolling fat, my legs are sticking to the vinyl and my posse's getting laughed at. F-R-E-E, -E, that spells free. Creditreport.com, baby. Offer applies with enrollment and triple advantage. If you are a fan of courage, if you admire determination, if you are impressed by grace under pressure and can't help but share in the joy of victory, then you are already a fan of Special Olympics. Make it official. Volunteer, coach, or compete. And be a fan of dignity, acceptance, and the human race. Miguel Angel Torres. Undefeated in five years. The best pound for pound in the world. Can undefeated Brian Bowles pose a threat? Ask his last seven victims. Torres versus Bowles. Live Sunday, August 9th. Only on Versus. First, I was afraid. I was petrified. Kept thinking that each meeting meant that I would have to fly. But that I spent so many nights reading emails way too long. That I grew strong. Network video came along, and so I'm back. No time to waste. Just click the mouse and get things done. See people face to face. I should have changed things long ago. This technology saved the day. More collaboration, less complication. That's the human network effect. Learn more at cisco.com slash newways. The right coverage isn't just about the car. It's about who's in the passenger seat. Coverage that's personal for people with freckles and mustard stains in hopes of catching the game ball. Coverage is smart when I buy it, and even smarter when I need it. Join the thousands of us getting better auto coverage at a better price under the Traveler's umbrella. Get better coverage with Travelers and save an average of $383. To find an agent near you or to get a quote, visit Travelers.com or call 1-800-MY-COVERAGE. The 2009 Tour de France on Versus is brought to you by Travelers Insurance. Get better coverage at Travelers.com or call 1-800-MY-COVERAGE. Welcome back. The Col de l'Escrenet is the second category climb and the last climb of the day, which comes just 16 kilometers from the end of the stage today in Aubenas. This is the breakaway, but I'm afraid it's not good news, and it looks as though the heart is out now. 18 seconds. 
Uh, the farmers of the region have really gone to town here to make the Tour de France welcome as well. We don't come this way very often to make a finish right in the heart of the Ardèche, and they've welcomed the Tour, as the Tour has been welcomed all around France, Switzerland, Italy uh, this year, and of course the great start we had in Monaco with so many people watching the prologue time trial, which is really stage one. Well, it looks as though they're not going to make it. There's Duque, must be feeling a little bit disappointed. That uh, looked like a stage win for him there. Well, Phil, I would say if you'd looked at the race route today, you'd looked at the temperature, the race roads, the scenario of a breakaway with 14 different teams represented, 99 times out of 100, that breakaway Absolutely. would have succeeded. Uh, what's a little bit worrying now is the nature of the roads into Aubenas, because I don't believe uh, that um, the uh, Tour de France was expecting a bunch spin down in this town. By the way, occasionally we call it Aubenas, that's like if you come from Marseille, Aubena if you come from Paris, so <laughs> excuse us. The, the joy of the French language. Indeed. Well, as the riders go through St. Julien here, I don't think we'll see too much of a spin. Let's check into the car cam, see what's happening in there. Remember, we're inside Cervelo's team car today. There we can see Alex Sons at Viga. Hi, Dor. Hi, then, Brett. I know we're ready up there. Maybe we have to sprint. We're ready. Yeah, come on. Well, the reason he's saying that is Tor Hushoft may have to go for the green jersey point if they're swept up, and there they are. As, and uh, Duque is going to take the points anyway, six points and 800 euros. So it's OK, you won't have to sprint Tor Hushoft because these boys will take away the green points, which means that Mark Cavendish won't creep any closer to Hushoft, who has a 30-point advantage over Mark Cavendish. Duque gets it, and it looks though he's going to try and push on for a little while. Well, that was a little move which saved uh, Tor Hushoft having to worry about the points, Paul, because the peloton almost on them there at that sprint point. I wonder if Tor Hushoft is uh, starting to nurture thoughts of getting himself over that big climb as well, Phil, because, you know, he hasn't got an unassailable lead in the points classification. He's got 30 mm. points over Mark Cavendish. There's 35 points at stake on the finish line on the Champs Elysees. And today, although we go over a second category, climb is ranked as a flat stage with 35 points for the winner of the stage. Well, all these things are possible now once the breakaway is caught, of course. Yep, once they're caught, but they are very likely to be oh, caught there because they there they are. Just around Sad. the corner is Leonardo Duque. He's prolonging the agony, I would have to say. The main field will not allow him very much more freedom, and they're having made the effort to catch the breakaway, they will keep up, keep up the pace over the top. Stefan Auger just checking on his pulse at the moment, up to 158 beats a minute. So that's uh, reasonably high. He's into the orange zone rather than the red zone, but that's because they've been chasing down these breakaways, and it's a pretty hot day. We managed to skirt that storm as well, which was quite amazing, but the clouds went the other way, and so the riders were lucky with that. No, they certainly were, but uh, getting up to that 160 beats a minute is an indication that was a fairly hard chase in the peloton, as uh, these four now are back with their mates for the first time since uh, kilometre nine. So, as we're watching here, the uh, bunch are all together, with the exception of Leonardo Duque. And I'm just going to try and talk now with the team manager today of the Cervelo test team. I should think he's quite relieved now they've brought back all the breakaways, bar one. Alex, can you hear Phil Liggett? Over. I'll hear tempo later. Lovely. Alex, uh, now... That... Oh, hang on. Alex, can you, can you hear Phil? Well, Alex, uh, I can hear your car radio, but can you hear Phil? Hello, yeah, I can hear you. Terrific. Alex, um, now the bunch is back together, what's the possibility for Tor Hushoft? Is it a stage he could possibly win? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, we, we have our options. Uh, uh, it's a second category climb. We all uh, could see how well he was climbing uh, and get out, so it could be good for us. Uh, we just have to see uh, the peloton and which teams uh, they decide to, to work in this climb and which uh, speed they, they will put it, will put uh, on that climb. Well, Alex, also, there's a lot of people asking us here on Versus about the condition now of Jens Voigt because everybody loved watching him in the Tour de France and they were, they were very, very sorry when they saw him crash on television. How is he now? 
Uh, the last news I have, I spoke yeah, yesterday with somebody from his, from his team. And uh, today, I think it was today, he was going home. Uh, oh, it's okay. There's no blood. Maybe he will get a small surgery when he's getting back home. But uh, it looks uh, all fine. It's all fine, and I think he will be soon on the bike again. Yeah, I realise he's not on your team, but I know that you guys talk to each other about these things. Now, what's happened to Carlos Sastra this year, Alex? Nothing. Uh, just uh, he didn't have the condition uh, he, he expected. You know, uh, he was in the Giro also, and and it's also a tough, a very hard race. Yeah. And maybe the recovery after the Giro was not uh, as well as we we thought it was. And so, but it's things to learn for the future. He did a great Giro. He he opened the fight in this Tour de France. He was the first one on the King stage to, to open the fire. So he was not at the level of the other years, but he still was there in the front and tried to give his, his best. Okay. Alex, best of luck for tomorrow. Maybe we'll see Carlos heading up the Mont Von 2 in first place. Thanks very much for talking to us. No problem. Thanks for you. That was Alex uh, Sanz Viga, who is the director of the Team Cervelo on the road today as they now continue to race here to try and pick up this one lone leader here but he's hanging on to 14 seconds these poor Aberbank boys still doing all of the work on the front and they must have thought well we've got 18 of the riders back but we've still got to get one more back and I'm quite sure that if they do get them back Oscar Freire is going to feel the pressure so you may just have noticed there we went over the Nike chalk pot today just a few moments ago as I was talking with Alex there. And don't forget the Nike chalk pot follows the roads of the Tour de France and you can follow the Nike chalk pot at home on Twitter or at wayyellow.com. Just log on and submit your own messages of courage and inspiration just the last weekend to come to do that. The lone leader licking his lips. Oh dear, not the time to look over your shoulder. Leonardo, the peloton are coming a hunting. It doesn't look like he will survive much longer. We'll take a break. Lollipop, lollipop. Oh, lolly, 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 lollipop. Boom, 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 boom. Attention, select L minis come standard with Verizon Wireless Mobile Broadband built in. So you can surf the web, check email, chat, and download on the go. All on America's largest and most reliable 3G network. I call a lollipop. Treat yourself to the 10-inch mini with your choice of six colors. Starting at just $3.99. Dell, yours is here. Tomorrow, heroes and villains, babes and robots, dark knights and Jedi knights. Everything awesome is happening at Comic-Con. And only G4 can get you inside. And it does not get any bigger than this right here. We're there first with news and previews of the biggest blockbuster movies, plus G4's world broadcast exclusive of the Star Wars Spectacular panel event. Comic Con! Comic Con 09 Live, tomorrow at 2, only on G4. gets you out running, walking, or doing what you really love to do. You have your own motivations for being out there. Enjoy every second. The Boulder Running Company has what you need to make your experience even better. From free video gait analysis, to a huge casual shoe selection, to apparel and accessories. The Boulder Running Company. Boulder, Denver, Colorado Springs, and online at boulderrunningcompany.com. Whatever your style, whatever your taste, you will find the perfect work of art at the Global Art Dealer's Starving Artist Sale. This Sunday only. Thousands of hand-painted oils priced from $19 to $69. Giant 3-foot by 4-foot paintings, $99 or less. We bring you the finest oil paintings at the absolute lowest prices. Come visit Global Art Dealer's Starving Artist Sale in Westminster at the Doubletree Hotel, in Denver at the Four Points by Sheraton Hotel, and in Lakewood at the Holiday Inn Hotel. This Sunday only, 10 to 5. Seven races left, and they're all on Versus. The fastest drivers on the planet are on the final laps to the championship when IndyCar returns to Versus. Sunday at 5. 
lot of us in the IndyCar series, you know, have used cycling as, as a form of fitness to prepare for the IndyCar racing. When you start to lose concentration in a race car, you start to make mistakes, and I'm sure that if you start to think about how much your legs burn, it's probably not going to make you go any faster. It's not the Honda engine, you know, I mean, it's your legs and it's your chest, and I guess uh, whoever has more of that is definitely going to be an advantage. Concentration, focus, strategy, teamwork, I mean, that's all we have. Tour de France is probably one of the greatest sporting events in the world, really. You see some members of the IndyCar series there, all experts now on the Tour de France, but don't forget Sunday the series on Versus storms into Canada for the Rexall Edmonton Indy. And midway through the season, it's a tight situation. Reigning series champion Scott Dixon and Dario Franchitti are locked in a big battle. To capture the crown, they'll need to fend off a lot of other young riders, uh, drivers rather, than Ryan Bisco and among the world's best drivers. That's the Rexall Edmonton Indy, live Sunday, 5 Eastern, here on Versus. Well, the clouds haven't actually gone away. They're still with us, but they're staying and behaving themselves just for the moment as the riders continue to course the way down to Obana. Still a high-speed chase here, Paul, and a long, thin line. This has been a rapid day's racing today. They've never fallen away from the fastest schedule on the bucks, so they're going to be in town quite early. And then uh, think only of the big climb of Mont Ventoux tomorrow. The Pont de Coup. What do we know about that, Paul? Well, the Pont de Coup, this is one of those uh, medieval villages I was telling you about a little earlier. They were all uh, very much fortified. Uh, they've got a lot of very narrow streets in there. It's situated right on the Uverse Valley. And it was extremely important uh, in years gone by for its uh, military and military control. Look, just looking, there's a problem there at the back with a flat tire. Yes, he's waiting for, for a tire. I think it's uh, Jürgen Vandenbroek as well. And uh, there is the coffee rider. Well, that's Duque. Uh, I think he's just given up. They've just come right up to him now. It's all over at 30 kilometers to go. The peloton is a groupe, as uh, the race radio will say. And it, in fact, Duque is dropping down through the pack here, and I don't quite know why. I think he's probably just going back to the, the team car, Phil, to uh, take on board drinks. He was in the breakaway for an awful long time. We may well be looking at a, a rather strange race here because I just noticed Team Columbia HTC moving Mark Cavendish to the front of the main field. And although we don't talk about Cavendish, well, we do talk a lot about him not being a climber. But in the early part of this year, he won a race called Milan-San Remo, which itself goes over some fairly big climbs. Now, yeah. wouldn't that be one for the books if Cavendish gets over this final second category climb and gets himself back into the green jersey race? Well, he's, uh, he's uh, 30 points behind... Torhoshoff. There's 35 points for a win today. There's 35 points on Sunday. Uh, that's certainly in his gun sights. There we have all the boys with Cavendish in tow moving forward. And the rain might well hit the riders before the finish. And if it does come, it'll be very heavy. Uh, so that could make a whole difference here. 230 points Torhoshoff has to the 200 of Cav. If he scores points today, it's not a done deal for Hushoft. No, it isn't. There's 35 points available uh, on the finish line. This is regarded as a flat stage, although it's not flat on the running towards the finish. And as you mentioned earlier, I'm sure the race organization here did not expect a bunch sprint because the last three kilometers running in towards the finish line are very precarious, tricky and yep. technical. Very much so as uh, they'll head up to the steeper part of the climb. They're on the climb now, basically, but it's not the actual categorized section of the climb. Uh, but as you can see from the road there, we are snaking our way uphill. We get out above the town. This is Privas, and then they'll go into the outside of the town. Well, this is the climb that the riders will be going up shortly, Phil. 14 kilometres in length, a 4.1% gradient at the top as it's 16 kilometres to go. So we're on just about the start of the Col de l'Escrenet. So we'll take a quick break, and don't worry, it's a long climb. We'll come back and see if there are any attacks on this, and if there aren't, then they could well be playing into the hands of Mark Cavendish today. We'll take a break. Kelly Saunders Nature Valley. The place that inspires her to go faster. And slower. Elk Mountains, Colorado. Where's yours? 
100% natural Nature Valley granola bars that taste nature intended. It's not about me. It's about my sister. It's about my dogs. Hang on. It's about my son. It's about sharing my story. So people can compare their stories to mine. Getting back to the mound, it was a struggle. I was on the highest mountain in the world, fighting for my life. Yeah! If I can get through six rounds of chemo, then 50 below, 100 mile an hour wind. Pitching a no hitter seems easy. It's about you. for everyone is here. The insight designed and priced for us all from Honda. Miguel Angel Torres. Undefeated in five years. The best pound for pound in the world. Can undefeated Brian Bowles pose a threat? Ask his last seven victims. Torres versus Bowles, live Sunday, August 9th, only on Versus. During times like these, it seems like the world will never be the same. But there is a light beginning to shine again. The spark began where it always begins. At a restaurant downtown. In a shop on Main Street. A factory around the corner. Entrepreneurs like these are the most powerful force in the economy. They drive change, and they'll relentlessly push their businesses to innovate and connect. As we look to the future, they'll be there ahead of us. Lights on, showing us the way forward. This is just the beginning of the reinvention of business. And while we're sure we don't know all the answers, we do know one thing for certain. We want to help. See what the beginning looks like at openforum.com. Alberto Contador adding yesterday's time trial win to his win at Verbier. One a mountain, one a time trial. These are high definition pictures we're showing you. If you're not sure how you get them, please check your listings for that. Because around France, they have been stunning pictures this year. And many of you, and thank you, have told us as well. Well, we're looking at the crowds here as we continue through the town of Priva and break back out into the country very shortly as a lot of riders sitting up, including Franco Pelazzotti, the king of the mountains, with no worry about the mountains anymore. He's won that competition. So he's just uh, riding into the finish. I'm hearing, too, that one of the sprinters, Rojas, has just been dropped. This is Juan Manuel Garati, just off our camera to the right, who's working for Oscar Freire today. Well, you can tell the pressure's gone off Franco Pelazzotti, Paul, and uh, the king of the mountains, no need to worry about mountains. Yeah, but he's a very clever rider, Phil. I noticed on the climb up to Verbier, he pulled off at the bottom of the climb, conserving energy, knowing that the time was not important for him anymore. And I think one of the reasons for him to switch off on this day is he's probably thinking about tomorrow, maybe trying to get himself into a move and get some glory on the Mont Ventoux. Cavendish is still there. We're looking at Bradley Wiggins uh, and uh, wisely putting himself uh, near the front of the bunch here as we go through the town of Priva, heading to the last climb of the day. But I strictly believe the organizers did not expect such a big bunch to come down to this small town through narrow roads. It will be quite a sight to see these riders sprinting for the line en masse. So the wise men will ride up near the front where Contador is. Wiggins has done just that. Cavendish, as you spotted, Paul, is still in this group. And uh, this could be a very interesting sprint 
now. So too is Tor Hushoff. But to give you an idea of how hard it is in this group, where we've got Chris Anker Sorensen's heart rate fill up to 171 beats a minute. Not a massive wattage at 200. That's a, a fairly average wattage, but that will get a little bit more difficult because once we leave this town of Privas, which is pretty much a, a municipality town, we start to get to the climb proper, and that's when it kicks up and the gradient becomes that bit more severe. Juan Manuel Garati, former champion of Spain, setting the pace for Rabobank and hopefully for Oscar Freire today. The, the boys will ride this hill on a very fast high gear because it's not steep. Uh, they, if they keep a very hard tempo on it, though, they will crack this peloton, that's for sure. In you go, Cuesta taking over there for Team Cervelo. Test team at the front looking back here to see uh, which riders have managed to get themselves into the split. There's an another attack. acceleration coming to the front. In fact, it's B-Box Telecom. They weren't in the breakaway in the early part of the day. They're throwing caution to the wind to try and get off. They won't ruffle the, the sprinters' feathers, though, Phil. They'll try and keep it organised. Well, this looks like Laurent Lefebvre has made the move there to try and get away from the field as he now uh, stretches the gap a little bit. Somebody had to throw something. Now, remember, B-Box had nobody in the break breakaway one of the teams that missed out and this is the way to beat the sprinters as he attacks the hill here and goes for it he's 51 minutes down there's no reason to alert the boys in Astana well uh, team Rabobank not panicking they know they've got to keep it together just let that breakaway happen see whether the guy uh, hits the wall and stays off the front end of the main field we're now Phil looking at nine kilometers to go to the summit of the climb 25 kilometers to go to the finish with Laurent Lefebvre and an advantage of not much more than 10 seconds a big effort now by Laurent Lefebvre as he continues now to open up the gap prizes it just a little bit inside 25 kilometers to go remember the last uh, 16 kilometers are all downhill through narrow streets to the finishing line and it's a tortuous approach to the finish as well and the field here just waiting to see what happens before there has to be a reaction again from Rabobank if they want to win this with Oscar Freire Cervelo will have to react because they would like to tow up uh, Tor Hush off the low. They might not want the high point score because that might fall to Cavendish and that's not going to help Tor Hush off in that green jersey competition. A quick break, rejoin us. When was the last time you climbed a tree? Or bit off more than you could chew? Remember when you landed the big one? Or at least said you did? Save on the gear to get it done at Bass Pro Shops, like Bushnell 8x30 binoculars with built-in camera for only $99.94 and the Ruger Limited Edition 22 rifle for just $299.99. Your adventure starts here. Make plans now for the Bass Pro Shops Fall Hunting Classic. So, Katie kicked off the conference call. But we missed the first half trying to download the docs. It's turned out to be the old new docs rather than the new new docs. And bobbed out in from home and his dog starts. So Jen jumped in with her two cents. Which cents. Katie missed because she was buying shoes online. And I hit mute. To talk timelines with my team. Getting lots of dirty looks through the phone in the process. Overall, a great call. Great call. Yeah. Introducing a better way. Learn more at cisco.com slash new ways. <laughs> At the World Championships, it's not about wrapping yourself in newfound glory. It's about wrapping yourself in old glory. Yeah, I believe in ghosts. I think I've seen some really weird things. I don't know if I believe in ghosts. I believe in the paranormal. I need to know that there is not any possibility, not any other possibility for I'm like, you know what, that's a ghost. Is anybody here? Make this a value-packed water world summer. Parking's free, picnics are welcome, and the amazing Big Top Family Fun Zone is waiting. Get info at waterworldcolorado.com. Whatever your style, whatever your taste, you will find the perfect work of art at the Global Art Dealer's Starving Artist Sale. This Sunday only. Thousands of hand-painted oils priced from $19 to $69. Giant 3-foot by 4-foot paintings, $99 or less. We bring you the finest oil paintings at the absolute lowest prices. Come visit Global Art Dealer's Starving Artist Sale in Westminster at the Doubletree Hotel, in Denver at the Four Points by Sheraton Hotel, and in Lakewood at the Holiday Inn Hotel. This Sunday only, 10 to 5.
Welcome back. Well, these are the standings in the green jersey. We didn't really expect to be talking about it today, but 230 for Hushoff, 200 for Cavendish. Just those two are involved in the battle. But we did talk to Tor Hushoff this morning with Robbie Ventura at the start. So that's our Cisco Insider now. I think everybody's had a good time watching the war between you and Cavendish for the screen jersey, switching hands several times during the tour. Has this been one of the most epic battles you've seen for the green? Uh, it's at least the biggest uh, battle I, I have been through. So uh, no, but they, we had uh, we had good uh, good time and uh, good fun, and I think uh, yeah, we're going to end it on 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 a, just on a nice uh, nice sprint. Beautiful. Today is an, an opportunity possibly for you to get some more points in the green jersey. Will you sit back today and, and kind of let the race play out and wait to the Shams, or will you try to cement your lead uh, with getting points today? I mean, uh, I think it's going to attack uh, a lot from the beginning, and uh, if, if I can get some points for a place behind, I will try, but uh, it's not a big, big goal for me today. Thanks, Tor. Good luck today. Yes, I think Tor Hushoff, like everybody else, expected the breakaway to go and never be seen again till they're in the showers, but that isn't the case, is it? Uh, the brace has come together again, so Hushoff is now being forced to, to go head-to-head -head with Mark Cavendish. 22 kilometres to go. Cavendish, Freire are there. Hushoff a bit further down the line. Very fast tempo. The riders have just been told, uh, I've heard on Radio Tour, that in the last kilometre of the climb, there are very, very, very many spectators. So they're going to have to watch it up the top here. Well, Look they at will. all the cars down here. Uh, they're massive turnouts. In fact, uh, on a lot of the side roads, uh, Phil, uh, there's a, there are huge camping communities of these camper vans. People have followed <laughs> the Tour de France right the way around the whole of the hexagon of France. This man is holding on. Well, he's stretching out a slight advantage. He's stretched it up to uh, 15 seconds. But the main field is just riding a tempo. It's being led by the teams of the sprinters, Team Rabobank, setting the pace making. And they don't want to split that group. They want to make sure that their man... Oscar Freire stays in contact. Well, it's a big effort by Laurent Lefebvre, and it might get in the prize at the top of the Col de l'Escrenet, Les but that's about it. I can't believe he will hold them off, uh, but you never know. There could be a few people hampered by the way down, and it's getting very dark up here on the finishing line too, so it's uh, that rain is still following the riders, but so far, no umbrellas required. Huge efforts now. This looks like... Is this Heinrich Hauser on the front at the moment, making a big effort for Cervelo? Uh, they're obviously thinking Torhushoff may have a chance now at some more points in the green. Looking at the back, back uh, legs and the gearing on the chosen today by Laurent Lefebvre. Crowd still happy here in warm conditions. Well, Lefebvre has got a, a 10 second advantage. You know, he's just hovering off the front end of the main field. They feel, want to keep themselves together and they will pick up the pace once they go over the summit. There's there the kangaroo on the bike of number 11, Cadell Evans. He tried this, uh, this afternoon. He got himself into the breakaway, which looked like the winning breakaway. But once again, Lady Luck is not on Cadell's side this year. Uh, still a couple of kilometres to go to the top of this climb. Cadell, though, has not been dropped from the bunch for his efforts this morning. A lot of those riders have. Five kilometres to the summit. So we'll, what, we'll have to take another break, but we'll be back before the riders top the summit here of the Col de l'Escrenet. And will Laurent Lefebvre defend what is at just a handful of seconds advantage? When your engine's running clean, you feel it. Pennzoil Motor Oil actively cleans out up to 15% of sludge the first time you use it. So feel the clean. Not just oil, Pennzoil. Right now at Lowe's, get 10% off Energy Star products throughout the store. And you can even ask for an additional 10% off all your purchases or special financing for 12 months when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's, let's build something together. Buckle up, everybody, because we're taking a ride that can strain your relationships and hurt your pride. It's the credit roller coaster, and as you can see, it kind of bites. So sing the lyrics with me. When your debt goes up, your score goes down. When you pay a little off, it goes the other way around. It's just the same for everybody, every boy and girl. The credit roller coaster makes you want to hurl. So throw your hands in the air and wave them around like a wannabe frat boy trying to get down and bring them right back to where your laptop's at. Log on to freecreditreport.com. Free credit score and report with enrollment and triple advantage. Welcome to Progressive.com. You must be looking for motorcycle insurance. You're good. Thanks. So is our bike insurance. All the coverage you need at a great price. Cool. Hold on, cowboy. I'm not done. For less than a dollar a month, you also get 24-7 roadside assistance. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> 
Sounds like you're right at 500. <laughs> More like a 900 between. Excuse me. Well, you're excused. <laughs> the right insurance for your ride. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. Tomorrow, heroes and villains, babes and robots, Dark Knights and Jedi Knights. Everything awesome is happening at Comic-Con, and only G4 can get you inside. And it does not get any bigger than this right here. We're there first with news and previews of the biggest blockbuster movies, plus G4's world broadcast exclusive of the Star Wars Spectacular panel event. Comic-Con! Comic-Con 09 Live, tomorrow at 2, only on G4. Seven races left, and they're all on Versus. From the ovals. Outside, on the to the streets. Day and night. From Florida to Japan. The fastest drivers on the planet are on the final laps to the championship when IndyCar returns to Versus. Sunday at 5. As you can see, there are two leaders now, and I think we can show you moments ago just how the world champion, Alessandro Balan, crossed the gap here. he come up to Laurent Lefebvre with a big effort. This was the attack. This happened about four to five minutes ago. Nobody. They just looked across the road. There was no reaction from the group. You can see Lance Armstrong, uh, center right of our picture, in front of Contador. Well, Balan, who's uh, coming back, really, after illness to the sport this year, having not had a very good year at all, now finding his legs as he comes towards the end of this Tour de France. First time out in front, the peloton under, 20 kilometres to go. There are two leaders now, Lefebvre and Balan. 20 kilometres from the finish, there is Mark Cavendish in the green jersey of Tor Hushoff with the red number six is hooked up to the back of him. Tor wears that as the most aggressive rider of the stage two days ago. There's no vote for the aggressive rider in the time trial, of course. 16 seconds, it's hard work to get a second lead in this race today. It really is, uh, but these two riders swapping the turns, they're still looking, Phil, at a good three kilometres to go to the summit of the climb. The, the climb summit at 16 kilometres to go to the finish, and then they plunge down the other side into the outskirts of Obana. Well, at least Lefebvre's uh, lead has doubled with the arrival of Alessandro Balan. The peloton still holding themselves reasonably compact, and most of the tempo riding it looks down there now. Astana got back in, and they won't be chasing down those readers. The tempo being done there by Denny Menshov in person, the man who started this race as the leader of Team Rabobank, but he's had a disastrous Tour de France after winning the Giro d'Italia in the, month of, the months of May and June. And now he's just going to ride on the front and do that tempo making for his sprinter, Oscar Freire. And this is definitely an Oscar Freire type finish, but if they don't get rid of Mark Cavendish, he's got a little bit of a point to try and prove. But all of the heads of the Tour de France are here. Armstrong, Contador, Andy Schleck in white. Bradley Wiggins there just behind Andy Schleck. They're still looking for brother Frank and Cloden. But they're riding at the front now to keep out of trouble. They must be told, I should think, by their team management that the finish here is a little bit precarious for a peloton this big. Yes, it certainly wasn't designed for a bunch sprint this course, Phil, and uh, I think that may well be why we uh, could see a split up on the descent. Alessandro Balan has uh, joined forces with Laurent Lefebvre, and they are slowly eking out an interesting advantage now. It's up to just about the 22nd mark with two and a half kilometres to go to the summit. But you can see how fast this climb is. They're using fairly fast gears here, just on two kilometres to go, up over to the... Uh, the long drop down to the valley below before we ripple up again towards Obana. And this is the tail of the crowd here, but they say the last kilometre, the crowds are very, very large indeed. These two boys are going to get some big cheers, especially as uh, Lefebvre comes from France. And also as uh, the world champion, it's quite rare in this day and age for a world champion to participate in the Tour de France. I can't remember the last time we saw the world champion's jersey. And uh, it's something quite special for an Italian to be leading uh, the bike race here 
He'll be looking for the victory this afternoon, Phil. Uh, his best performance of the year was third place overall in the early season training race, the Tour of Sardinia. Brett Lancaster disappearing back now. But all of the time, despite the fact that some of the Cervelo test team riders are dropping backwards, their team sprinter, Tor Hussoft, is still in the leading group. He's a strong rider, and this terrain will certainly shoot him here as Brett has fallen off. Let's get back up to the front. This is Denny Menchoff with the bandages of the Battle of the Alps, where he crashed on one day on three occasions. But he's now setting the pace and wisely tucked in. It's Paulino just behind him, but Bradley Wiggins is tucked in. There is the green jersey you see, locked onto the back wheel of the fastest sprinter in the world, so he tells me. I think it's justified to say that. Mark Cavendish, as he now just sits on a teammate here for the final lead out to the line, and it's Tony Martin he's got up behind at the moment. So, as the peloton are now at 12 seconds, here's the crowd for you to see, and they're very orderly too, aren't they? Obana is on the signs there, as they now cheer a lead around from a world champion, the winner last year, and a Frenchman in Lot Lefebvre. The farmers in the fields there have been doing themselves a little bit of art, as I'd remind you, versus.com forward slash ride of your life. Join our Cadillac ride of your life sweepstakes. A great prizes, including a visit to the tour next year. Green jersey is the code word you need today. Thomas Voiker creeping up on the left of our picture. He will look for an opportunity here if he can get it. The green hands are out for Tor Hushoff, that's for sure. The caravan has gone through and actually has finished its route now. It's already come in at the finishing line today. Oh, this is like the top of Alderez just at the moment. Listen to the noise. You see, crowd like this, as orderly as that is superb. They're just looking forward at the riders and applauding. No reason for barriers here. They're looking at the winner of the Giro d'Italia on the front. They're looking at the yellow jersey of uh, Alberto Contador. They're looking at Lance Armstrong, who is in second place. Bradley Wiggins just behind. Andy Schleck and Frank Schleck. And then comes the Columbia HTC, guiding Mark Cavendish to a possible sprint win. And right on his wheel, the green jersey of Hushoft. Well, uh, this is not what we predicted at all, Phil. I expected a, a big splitting of the main field here, but, uh, you know, when you're a sprinter with the pride of Mark Cavendish, who has this dream of getting the green jersey on the Champs-Élysées, I think that's what's driven him up this climb this afternoon. He's inside uh, of the last kilometre of the climb, so he will crest this main field in the, the climb with the rest of the group, and that makes it uh, line up for a very interesting charge to the finishing line here. It'll be very exciting, guaranteed today now once they go into the last 16 kilometers of the day they'll have to descend and there's a couple of hairpins on the way down as a Balan himself the world champion crests the last climb of the day and this is the Col de l'Escrinet and the world champion's got his first prize in this year's Tour de France out on course as well as uh, behind Laurent Lefebvre goes over second. Well, he'll be a tough man to pull back. There is the main field, and it's uh, Egoy Martinez filled with a little bit of pride, getting himself third place and a few extra points to keep himself solidly in second position in that competition. Andy Sleck comes across in the top six or seven, but the sprinters are there. The green jersey on the shoulders of Hushoff, and of course, Mark Cavendish for Columbia HTC. So now what they've got to do is pull back those two leaders and try and make it a day for Cavendish. That won't be easy. This is an attack by Luis Leon Sanchez. Remember him? He won the once this year. He's won once last year. And he looks like he's going to try it again here. And he's going to take a few risks on the way down. Pretty tight bend initially, but the roads stay narrow all the way to the finish. And our camera's going to have a job to keep out the way of Luis Leon Sanchez just now. Uh, that's it, attack over, I think, they've, uh, they've marked him this time as they tip over the top of the mountain. You can get some idea of how high we have come now, although it doesn't feel it because of the way the buildings are on top of the mountains around this part of the world. But we'll drop away now, what a marvellous crowd that was. They'll all be indoors now watching the televisions as the riders move down towards the finish. Big effort being made by Alessandro Balan. What a terrific result it would be if the world champion was to hit form today and win the stage. Nobody likes being a world champion and having a blank scorecard, and that's exactly what he's got at the moment. 
The last race he won was the world title hold, world title race back in September. Sanchez is still trying to reach him, and uh, we wish him well. He'll have to take a break and come back and rejoin us. From, from your other relationships, some burn hot and fast, but don't last very long. Some burn for a while, but don't throw much heat. And some smolder beautifully for a long time. The award-winning Cadillac CTS sedan. And coming soon, the all-new CTS Sport Wagon. If you're looking for the love of your life, you could try your luck on dating sites, or you could graduate to eHarmony. eHarmony isn't a dating site. It's a relationship site. We go beyond the pictures and paragraphs to match you on the deepest dimensions of compatibility, like intellect and values, things proven to be the foundation of successful long-term relationships. If you want love, don't settle for a dating site. Go to eHarmony.com. Get started today and review all your compatible matches for Whatever your style, whatever your taste, you will find the perfect work of art at the Global Art Dealer's Starving Artist Sale. This Sunday only. Thousands of hand-painted oils priced from $19 to $69. Giant 3-foot by 4-foot paintings, $99 or less. We bring you the finest oil paintings at the absolute lowest prices. Come visit Global Art Dealer's Starving Artist Sale in Westminster at the Doubletree Hotel, in Denver at the Four Points by Sheraton Hotel, and in Lakewood at the Holiday Inn Hotel. This Sunday only, 10 to 5. Through the years, many things pass from father to son, like Aqua Velva Aftershave. Smells great, cools, firms, and tones. Cool. Aqua Velva, men get it. Wake up your whiskers with Electric Shave. Electric Shave! Stands up whiskers for an up to 52% closer shave. Man, that was close. Electric Shave, blade close, electric smooth. Welcome back as we look straight into the eyes here of Alessandro Balamo with the riders now right to the finishing line in Obernas. We've just picked up Luis Leon Sanchez. He's back in the pack, so it's these two leaders versus the rest. And the rain has started to fall here just a little bit, so it's going to be quite treacherous now. Well, clearly these two can't pedal any faster, so they're going to have to freewheel. As George Hincapie starts to ride on the front as well, Columbia HTC are taking a familiar role here, a role we haven't seen for a week, of course, because there's been nothing for Mark Cavendish through the Alps. No, uh, the sprinter's taken a back seat, and I'm sure that many of them feel, felt that they were going to take a back seat this afternoon. It's 10 kilometres to go, and at these speeds, that's going to be around about 12 minutes of racing. Columbia on the front, they don't want to give everything out just now because they know they've got to control and still conserve a certain amount of energy to lead out the sprint. Trying to get himself onto the wheel of Mark Cavendish is Tor Hushoff, the leader of the green jersey points classification. Now, if Cavendish can uh, start to get stage victories today, then uh, we are looking at the race for the green jersey being back on. We are just inside, 10 kilometers from the finish, the two leaders on the way down, and still the world champion, Alessandro B uh, Balan, doing most of the work here. Laurent Fevre is the, is the rider with him, but the chase behind is they're trying to regroup, and they're running away, I think, from that little rain shower. The roads are a bit drier here, and there's no rain at the finishing line. So it, the, the, uh, the gods may be on their side here, because they'll have enough problem with the tortuous approach to the line on narrow roads with a peloton like this well H uh, Columbia HTC doing the pacemaking on the front it's Tony Martin Maxime Montfort George Hincapie behind them it's their sprinter Mark Cavendish but sprinters are lining up behind the man from the Isle of Man Mark Cavendish behind him is Hushoff behind him is Gerard Cholik very fast men this is going to be a real royal sprint on a day that we did not expect it well they look quite a long way behind there as we could see over the shoulder of the two leaders they're going to look as though they feel anyway they can hold them off here umbrella are still up on the street corner there a rechange at the front here they're having a bit of a shuffle and uh, these are one of the narrow streets here so they've just got to watch themselves through these towns now this is Milram at the front line is Gerdeman's got himself onto the front for Milram and uh, the Columbia HTC boys 
but also all here George Hincapi into second wheel now remember this is the man who has a suspected broken collarbone still riding his Tour de France for Cavendish 15 16 seconds it's still stretching out for the two leaders a little bit of panic now starting to appear in the faces of the teammates of the sprinters as they realize now this is a fast run to the finish and when everybody's going downhill at 60 kilometers an hour Phil it's very difficult to actually nail down a gap Balan is trying to squeeze every inch out of this course right now as he pedals as far as he can and then he gets the free wheel and lowers the, the streamlining comes in and uh, I'm not too sure but I haven't actually seen Laurent Lefebvre do any work in these last few minutes it's all the world champion well the world champion is a class act he's got big power he won uh, the Tour of Flanders a couple of years ago you know throughout his career Phil that Alessandro Balan has only ever won nine professional bike races mm. but they're all pretty big ones Yes, he chooses well, I must say. He's a bit like Oscar Freire, although Oscar's won a lot more than that. But this is Laurent Lefebvre now as he continues seven kilometres to the finish. He's never been much further than 12 seconds ahead of the peloton. There they are, almost on the same stretch of road we saw moments ago. And uh, now the green jersey of Hushoff has just locked in. He's having a bit of a bump there, and I think it's with Gerald Cholik because they both want the back wheel of Cavendish. That's what they're looking for, and that's what they're going to try and base their sprint on. But if there's going to be a sprint, they need to nail back those two riders, Balan and Lefebvre. It's down to 11 seconds. This is Linus Gerdeman on the front. A man like Linus Gerdeman and George Hincapi, they don't think about any personal glory at a moment like this. They've got to keep the body hurting for as much as possible and look up the road every now and again to try and judge the difference in gap between themselves and the two leaders. And that is their prey, and that's what they're looking for. Well, this is a tricky stretch of town now as we've got the split on the road and it looks though they might get caught in here. Well, as you know, we've got a camera in the uh, Cervelo team car, so let's hear what they're saying. And 500 metres to go. 500 metres to go to the finish line is a big corner, big corner going to the right. Big corner going to the right, and the last 350, 400, 350, 400 meters, he goes a little bit up, but not much, only a little bit. Yes, well, that's Alex Sanzega there telling the team, which is Hushoff's team, about that nasty turn to the right, and it is sharp and it is quite narrow, and the riders are going to hit it very quickly. Well, still a lot of work being done. There's nothing in it at all. They're a little bit worried, Paul, about the right-hand turn at about 500 metres to go. I think, Mike, they should be because it looked narrow enough when we approached it in the car this morning. A little rise as they go through the town before the turn as well and quite narrow. As they go under five kilometres to go, the two leaders, we pull back, there is the pack. It's not the whole of the Tour de France today. We did lose quite a few riders on the climb, but all of the men that matter are here, and the two sprinters and Oscar Freire, I think they will be the ones now to dice out the finish. Well, I'll just take you through the last five kilometres, Phil, because from here to the next roundabout, one and a half kilometres, it's reasonably straight, and then it starts to get very bendy. We go around a, a roundabout at three kilometres to go, then there's a sharp left-hand bend around a roundabout at 1.2 kilometres to go, and then they've got that very sharp left-hand bend over the bridge, and then the right-hand one that you were talking about. But strangely enough, it is a very good finishing straight of around about 250 metres once they've taken the last sweeping right-hand bend. Well, there's a huge crowd here too, uh, all straining on the barrier at the moment to watch uh, to see who comes up here first. These boys have really tried to take this race away from the sprinters. Eight seconds the gap, four kilometres to go. It's not very far, is it? The roads are almost in their favour because there's not too much straight now once we get off this road here. We get uh, rights and lefts, so we're in the village as well. The peloton try to organise themselves. Milram are doing a good job, but they're doing it for Columbia HTC just at the moment, who have got all their lead-out men lined up, ready to fire the next missile. Well, Gerdeman uh, swung off and gone to the back, but there's still a rider from uh, Milram prepared to do the pacemaking on the front end of the main field. In fact, it's still Gerdeman. He's gone right back up there, realising this is important for his man, Gerard Cholik. George Hincapi now takes over. Behind him, uh, you can just see uh, that was Tony Martin, followed by Maxime Montfort, and locked in behind his teammates there is, of course, Mark Cavendish. No Mark Renshaw this afternoon, but you know what? I still think they've got a very good chance of leading him out properly. This is the right-hand turn around the traffic circle. 
That is not a big group, is it? No, it's not a big group now, and I think that's probably just as well. The police, the guys were planning on going right and left of that roundabout, but of course they were turning right. That would have been a total disaster if they'd have gone straight through. The rain is coming down again at three kilometres to go. It's amazing, not raining here at the finishing line. Three kilometres to go for the world champion and for Laurent Lefebvre. They've dangled right in front, but they're beginning to panic a little bit here now. They want to finish this off. Well, they certainly do. They've come to the part of the course now, Phil, which is going to start to, to suit the riders at the front because uh, there you can see the two leaders going around the corner. They can take the risks going around here, where in the main field it is very tricky. It's not very much at all. It's not much more than three or four seconds but you can see the power of Team Columbia. They're in fact starting to open gaps all the time. They're not completely organized. Cavendish is still in fourth place, but Columbia still have three men to lead out the sprint for Cavendish with Hussoft in the green locked into the slipstream of Cavendish. Well, they've made that left turn safely. They're slightly uphill here and they bear slightly to the right as we look at the television. Uh, there are the two, and they're still holding that gap, which it means that the sprinters here, are the teammates of the sprinters, are going to have to use a lot of energy up just to close this gap down. Alessandro Bolan, all of a sudden, after three weeks, is beginning to look like the world champion he is. Well, he is a class rider, but I'm not sure that he's going to survive here this afternoon because there's big organisation on the front end of the main field, and it's coming from one squad at two kilometres to go. Two kilometres to go now for these riders as they head towards the finish and they are flat out. Well, these two riders are still hanging on. They still have a moment to dream, but George Hincap is about to spoil that dream. The rain is at two kilometres now, and it's still not raining here. Well, it's still dry in the finishing straight, as we can see the motorbikes coming along here. Alessandro Belan makes one final click to try and get himself away from Laurent Lefebvre, <laughs> but he's not going to stop the inevitable because there is big George on the front, docking and diving, nodding his shoulders a fraction, trying to find that little bit more energy to nail back a man who he knows the reputation of because he's won the Tour of Flanders. Here is a right roundabout, and then once they go over this, they've Oops, got the nasty he... bridge. Somebody's taken a shot up there. Ferrer. That's got to be Oscar Ferrer. He's the only one that would do that as he went across the roundabout. I'll give him points for that, for staying upright. <laughs> It was the quickest way, fortunately, Paul, but there is the catch at one and a half, 1.2 kilometres from the line. George Hincap, he's done his job. He has now moved out of it. Julian Dean, by the way, for Garmin, he's now trying to lead Tyler Ferrer as well to the line. This is now going to get a little bit rough on roads which are glazed with water here at one kilometre to go now, and they've still got the flick up towards the finish at 500 metres. Well, this is an amazing day. Of course, you've got all the leaders of the overall classification in this group. Phil, but I never expected to see all of the top sprinters present and correct as they're now looking and searching for the Flam Rouge, the red kite. Cavendish is still up at the front. He's in second position. That's a long way to go from here on his wheel. There is Hushoff behind him at Cholek. A little bit further back, you can see the orange jersey of Oscar Ferreira. He needs to win it for the boys this afternoon because they did a great job for him. Mark Renshaw leading Mark Cavendish with Hushoff on his back wheel. Cholek, Cholek just behind him. This is going to be an almost slow motion sprint because now they've seen the hill and they've got to hang on in there as long as possible. Farah is also in there too as the hush off grits his teeth now. Now they will see the finish, the last couple of hundred metres to the line as they come off that final bend. They can't wait any longer but you know that's too far. Mark Cavendish can't possibly hold this on for this far can he? He's kicking again but I think it'll come something that will come over him here if he holds this Paul. He is a very, very strong rider. He led out so far far down the track I didn't think it was possible there's no one could touch Mark Cavendish with a win like that that was incredible Phil there was a little bit of added motivation in the sprint of Mark Cavendish this afternoon because of the relegation uh, a full post a week ago in Besançon it was a long way to the finishing line but he could feel the challenge coming alongside him you know when you're a sprinter you can almost feel the wind moving behind you when guys are starting the challenge there looking back he sees it's hush off he can feel now the acceleration coming there from Cholek on his left hand side and he kicks Cholik comes up to his bottom bracket there the pedals on the on this bike and all of a sudden he kicks again this man has got an incredible turn of speed Hushoff just has to be happy to finish in the slipstream second for Hushoff third for Cholik but that's a great win for Mark Cavendish and uh, a sorry sight for the world champion who you know was so close to getting his first victory of the season well that's got to be Mark's uh, best win of this tour and win number five of course 
and it's amazing but he now holds the record of British stage wins himself now nine in history that is a tremendous result for Mark Cavendish and Hushoff only conceded five points in the green jersey competition because he managed to get second so he still leads that competition by 25 points but uh, this man really tried this afternoon, Phil. Just look at that. He pushed himself so far into the red zone to get himself that victory. First of all, he pushed himself to get himself over the climb, just as he did in Milan San Remo right in the early part of this year in the month of March. He's done it again on a massive stage of the Tour de France. The two men, a second and third behind him there, are the two men who have said, we can beat this man, but they couldn't today. Well, I don't believe he's possible to beat now after that finish because they, launched, they had to let him go early because they run out of lead out men and to hold him that all that way down the straight those two strong much more mature riders couldn't get near him absolutely tremendous win this one for Mark Cavendish uh, looking a little bit further back you can see the damage that was done and uh, some uh, good riders Sergio Paolino coming into that group there's Mick Rogers he won't even know yet that his own teammate was first across the line well, we're already stage result there now. Cavendish beats Hushoff, Cholik, and Greg Van Avermaet, the silenced lotter rider. Well, as we look down here, we're high above the finishing line now because Aubenas itself is overlooking where we're finishing. As you see, we can't finish the Tour de France in the town itself. And uh, the riders now quickly getting toweled off. Uh, and you know, it's still not raining here on the finishing line. So the riders will attend the podiums in the dry, which is good news for us. As we will catch up with those, we'll just take our usual break after the out of breath sprint there by Mark Cavendish and Hushoff and Cholik. And when we come back, highlights, standings, and interviews. That's if Mark Cavendish has got his breath back. See you in a moment. To send an expert, a walking, talking, know-it-all expert, a guru. How about Wu? Wu will do. Where to? First stop, Peru. Then send Wu to Kathmandu. What's next? Timbuktu. And area code 212. So Timbuktu, Kathmandu, Peru, and 212? All by half past two. Not a problem. Need an expert? Push a button. That's the human network effect. Learn more at cisco.com slash newways. Kelly Saunders Nature Valley. The place that inspires her to go faster and slower. Elk Mountains, Colorado. Where's yours? 100% natural Nature Valley granola bars that taste nature intended. It's after midnight. What are you doing? I'm buying car insurance. Right now? Yep. I just logged on to thegeneral.com. At The General, you can get an instant online quote that includes a low rate, low monthly payment, and a down payment as low as $59, even if you have tickets or an accident on your record. Okay. All done. Great. Bring me some cheese puffs. Best car insurance rates in town. Call one 800 general now. in life when there are no limits, no boundaries, no walls, that the rules of gravity just don't apply, because there is no statute of limitations on greatness. A car wash for under a dollar? Incredible! A car wash and wax for under a dollar? Impossible! Until now, introducing the Sponge Tech Car Washing System, the revolutionary way to wash and wax your car to a professional finish. Sponge Tech's patented soap infusion process builds the soap and wax right into every fiber of the sponge, revolutionizing the way you clean from now on. And right now, just to get you to see how revolutionary the Sponge Tech cleaning system is, we'll give you enough Sponge Tech cleaning sponges for up to eight cars car washes and waxes, two detailing sponges, and this ultra-absorbent chamois. But wait, there's even more. If you call right now through this special TV offer, we'll triple your order. You'll get enough SpongeTech sponges for 24 car washes and waxes for just $14.95. 
To order your Sponge Tech Car Wash System, call 1-800-844-2198. That's 1-800-844-2198. Call now and we'll triple your order for only $14.95. That's 24 car washes and waxes. Don't delay. Call 1-800-844-2198 now. Welcome back. Well, Lee's one of the many chateaus. This one in need of repair. Here as we arrive in Aubenas today after 178 kilometers. This is our Trek aerial view today. And it's been a beautiful race indeed. And what a sprint by Mark Cavendish. I rate that as probably his best win in the Tour de France ever. And the ninth stage victory historically, which means he's now the outright holder of the record for British stage wins. I'd have to say that the man he took it away from, Barry Hobenfield, would probably be fairly proud of that victory too because for a sprinter to do what he did mm. is really very special, to drag your body over the climb. And the way he spoke to his, his teammates uh, to say, guys, just stay there, keep with me, don't leave me alone on this climb and still come up with the goods. Top hat. All right, well, it wasn't always the way today. There were other riders in the lead. Let's have a look back now at our Cadillac performance highlights. We go back to the start in Bourgoin Gelieu and the rollout with Contador in yellow, the world champion Alessandro Berlan, the nearest camera in white. And we would see him again in action, wouldn't we, uh, towards the finish? After the start at kilometre zero, nobody really wanted to come out very rapidly at all and it wasn't really until we started to get to the first climb of the day that we saw a move going off the front and this was Thierry Houpon of Team Skill ahead of uh, David Loosley and Egoi Martinez uh, getting a little bit of pride and a, and a single point there to get a, to consolidate his position in the King of the Mountains. That course. was after six kilometres, the break went at nine kilometres, the hotspot spin to the arrival, saw Duque just getting the better of Nicholas Roach of Ireland, uh, Sylvain Chavanel also in the break was third and on we went to the climb of the Côte de la Forêt. Yeah, this was a 19-man leading group and building up a lead of around about three minutes over the main fielder. Geoffroy Lecatre got himself maximum points there ahead of Laurence Roach. And then as they were being reeled in, Duque didn't want to be caught by the main field, so he tried to go from the remnants of the original breakaway, where five were clear, they were hunted down, and Duque went out on his own. But he wouldn't get very far. No, he survived by a few moments, and uh, once he was pulled back into the main field, the peloton remained under the control of Team Rabobank in the orange jerseys. They wanted to make sure their man, Oscar Freire, had a chance of getting the victory. However, the French wanted to have their glory on this day, and uh, this man, uh, Laurent Lefebvre, jumped out of the pack he opened up a lead of not very much more than 10 seconds until he was joined by the world champion Alessandro Balan who we've hardly mentioned at all in this year's tour this is all being enacted on the Col de l'Escrine and at the top here 16 kilometers to go down to the finish the world champion going over the top in first place Lefebvre and Martinez getting the third place over that mountain so he's consolidating second overall in the King of the Mountains. Then through the rain, they flew towards the finish with most of the work being done by the world champion. The gap stretching out to 15 seconds as the main field had been dramatically reduced in numbers, but it was the yellow-black train on the front of Team Columbia HTC trying to sort it out for their man. And within two kilometers to go to the finish, they finally pulled back the two-man breakaway, although Alessandro Balan did try one more time, but he could not avoid the inevitable. So they all came together, Oscar Freire taking the shortcut over the roundabout, bounces back into the peloton, and they caught him at 1.2 kilometers from the finish. Incapi had done his job well for Mark Cavendish, but now only Mark Renshaw was left at the front to lead out Mark Cavendish, and when he swung off, it really did look as though he put him into the front just a little bit too early, and all of the others were going for the prey of Cavendish. But you know, this man may be small, but he's an absolute pocket rocket. He just heads for that line sees them coming kicks again he won actually by three quarters of a length well he really did just look at this he knew he had a long way to go to the finishing line but he knew that he was going to get swamped if he didn't get the jump on them first and that's exactly what he did he got the victory that he'd been looking for win number five and that makes a british record of nine victories and that's our cadillac performance highlights of a great day of racing today in the tour de france Let's have a look at the results. Mark Cavendish, then, is the winner today. These riders particularly given the same time. Hushoff, Cholig, Avamat, and Oscar Ferrer in fifth place. But there will be a split today in times. Looking down, Jerome Pinu, these boys, Fumiaki Beppu, great result for the Japanese rider. Nicholas Roach, eighth. Four-second split. Armstrong was in the same time there. 
as the winner. So the other guys have lost a few seconds, including Bradley Wiggins. Might be an expensive four seconds. And the Sheck loses four seconds to Lance Armstrong as well. Always attentive, Mr. Armstrong, on the run in towards the finish line. Tony Martin, 17th, having led out his teammate Mark Cavendish, Vladimir Karpitz, uh, looking a little bit further back. Andreas Cloden also lost himself four seconds on his teammate. And so did Alberto Contador, of course. So uh, that may be not so serious now as everybody's lost time that mattered except Lance Armstrong. The shrewd Lance Armstrong, eh? Always reading the move, always right. Let's go down to the finishing line now. Robbie Ventura is talking with George Hincapie. Tell us about the, the uniqueness of the st today's stage, Rubber Bank going to the front and then you guys putting it together over the final climb. Uh, I mean, that's just not, not what everybody expected at the start, no? No, I mean, it was brutal. Obviously, Rob Bank was not happy that they weren't in the break <clears throat> and they had to ride all day. And it's just, uh, you know, nobody thought Cav would make it over the climb, but we knew he, you know, people don't say he's a climber, but the guy won Milan San Remo where climbers are getting dropped in Milan San Remo. And you saw it today, it wasn't many guys left. Uh, once we saw he was there, it was just everything for him. But uh, you again, uh, four of you guys, a mass to the front, nailed back that final breakaway, and, and he takes the victory. I mean, it's like it's like scripted that way, right? Let me go first. Yeah, I mean, it's it was tough. I mean, uh, nobody expected it, but we did it. It was good. Thanks, George. And you can see the strapping there on George Hincapie's right shoulder where he has a very painful collarbone, that's for sure. Yes, Mark Cavendish is such a, a gutsy fighter when it comes to win a stage of any race, not just the Tour de France. Yes, I wonder what uh, that is going to do for the uh, sprint on the Champs-Élysées now, Phil, because that is going to be a real head-to-head -head between Tor Hushot, who's won there before, and Mark Cavendish, who I think uh, wanted to win there on the final day, wearing the green jersey. Well, that's still to come, of course, but, uh, and if uh, Cavendish was to win, my goodness me, he would have won six stages of the Tour de France. We've had a couple of guys like Eddie Merckx and Freddie Martins win eight. There's only been three guys in the world won eight. Can't happen this year for Cavendish, but what about future years? Coming up, standings, podiums, and some more interviews. See you in a moment. for everyone is here. The Insight, designed and priced for us all from Honda. Lollipop, lollipop, oh lolly, 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 lollipop. Boom, 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 boom. Attention, select Dell Minis come standard with Verizon Wireless Mobile Broadband built in. So you can surf the web, check email, chat, and download on the go. All on America's largest and most reliable 3G network. I call Treat yourself to the 10-inch mini with your choice of six colors. Starting at just $3.99. Dell, yours is here. If you're driving a car that's under 15 years old with less than 200,000 miles, stay tuned to learn how you can save thousands of dollars on car repairs with an extended warranty from U.S. Fidelis. This is not the same warranty car dealers offer. It's better, costs less, and it's customized just for you. You pick your own coverage amount, deductible, and payment plan. You even pick the repair shop, and we pick up the bill, and we'll pay the shop directly, so you don't have to pay up front, then wait to be reimbursed. How much can you save? Plenty. It cost almost $1,300 to repair an air conditioner condenser, but the owner didn't pay a cent. U.S. Fidelis covered it 100%. It cost over $3,700 to replace a transmission, and U.S. Fidelis paid it all. The choice is yours. You can pay your repair bills yourself, or you can let us pay them for you. To find out more, call 1-800-367-3985 for a free five-minute quote. That's 1-800-367-3985. 1-800-367-3985. Call now race ever the tour de france and versus covers over 2100 miles for 23 days on air and online at versus.com get real-time results lance's daily video blog and use the race tracker for gps tracking interactive maps and rider profiles the tour de france 24 7 at versus.com Here's the thing that 
makes life so interesting. The theory of evolution claims only the strong shall survive. Maybe so. Maybe so. But the theory of competition says just because they're the strong doesn't mean they can't get their asses kicked. That's right. See, what every long shot come from behind underdog will tell you is this. The other guy may in fact be the favorite. The odds may be stacked against you, fair enough. But what the odds don't know is this isn't a math test. This is a completely different kind of test. One where passion has a funny way of trumping logic. So before you step up to the starting line, before the whistle blows and the clock starts ticking, just remember out here, the results don't always add up. No matter what the stats may say, and the experts may think, and the commentators may have predicted, when the race is on, all bets are off. Don't be surprised if somebody decides to flip the script and take a pass on yelling uncle. And then suddenly, as the old saying goes, we got ourselves a game. Open now for the end of the 19th stage of the Tour de France. We've just seen a tremendous sprint finish, which was not anticipated. Everybody, even the riders, expected a breakaway to succeed today, uh, but it didn't. And in the end, uh, Mark Cavendish, who has won today's stage, puts it down to his finest ever stage. You're in tears at the end. He can't believe those days of risky coming in with Dave uh, Miller. They're in a group now at some 18 minutes behind. Well, I don't think they have to worry too much about the elimination time. They're looking at around about 18 minutes. The average speed that you might notice there, Phil, is 46 kilometers an hour. So the cut, the elimination time today will be a fairly large one because of that high elevated yeah. speed on the stage. But I, for one, am, uh, have to say I'm very happy that the predictions were all wrong because we were treated to a very exciting finish. We were indeed. Cancellara is in there. And he's also, he went off the back as they came through the town of Priva with about 25 kilometers to go. And in that 25 kilometers, they've lost 18 minutes. So I think you could say they haven't really raced now. No worries, why should they? It was a, certainly a race out on the main road today, that's for sure. Well, Cavage is getting the fifth win. We're just waiting for the stage podiums to begin now. They're taking a while to sort themselves out tonight. Uh, but nonetheless, they'll be underway very shortly. Cavendish, I've never seen him so emotional, Paul, at the end of an event. He was in tears. He was hugging just about everybody he could find. And there he is now, all smiles. He never believed this was a stage for him, and he's won it. Well, I think the, the emotion there, Phil, comes from just exactly how hard he tried. He probably had never tried as hard as that to get himself over the mountains because he was motivated. He dreamed about winning this green jersey. He feels that the judges made a bad decision when he was relegated. He probably can't win the green jersey in the Tour de France this year, but he did also say that he came to the Tour to win as many stages as possible. And that's not bad, is it? Five. Yeah, absolutely tremendous. There's his hand. Five fingers, five wins. He's done everything no British rider has ever done before. He's won nine stages of the Tour de France now in two years. And, uh, well, I can't see him stopping on this sort of form for the years to come either. Anyway, let's have a look at our BMW ride of the day, and there'll be no prizes to know who we're going to feature right now. Of course, it was a Mark Cavendish victory today. Well, we talk about the ultimate driving machine, Phil. Well, this man today was certainly ultimate. He suffered like a dog to stay at the front end of the main field. He was surrounded by his teammates. Even Oscar Freire's little bunny hopper across the middle of that traffic circle couldn't do anything to stop the onslaught of the Columbia train. George Hincapie yet down the other day, but certainly not out. 
strong as ever, strong as an ox leading the riders over the last two kilometers. And then inside of the last uh, one kilometer, Tony, uh, uh, Tony Martin on the front there, trying to make the last little lead out for Mark Cavendish. Cavendish could feel the wind of everybody else, Phil, coming up alongside him and knew he had to go. He had to go for a long sprint, but he still had it in his tank. The speed of his pedaling ratio, much quicker than anybody else in competition. Yes, originally we thought that was Mark Renshaw, but we then realized it wasn't. It was Tony Martin. Renshaw came in at some way behind, but ahead of David Miller's group. So anyway, happy days again for Mark Cavendish. That's our BMW ride of the day. Let's have a look at the stage results. These are significant maybe because although these first five riders, all sprinters, uh, crossed the line in the same time, I knew the judges would make a separate time today because of the speed they ripped the peloton apart and only Lance Armstrong, always as he does, was paying attention. He stole himself four seconds over the other riders around him. There he is, just on the tail of the 12 men given the same time time and then Wiggins lost four seconds and the Schleck lost four seconds and as we continue to look down here you find all the other big names like Cloden and indeed Alberto Contador all lost four seconds. Well, that's uh, just the way that man is, Phil. He's very attentive. He pays particular attention to every detail in a race like the Tour de France. And you might think, well, what is four seconds? Well, four seconds at the end of the day could be the difference between a podium position and not. Absolutely. Alberto Contador, though, his lead was never endangered today. Of course, he knows that. Tomorrow will be uh, another chance to win a stage up uh, Mont Ventoux, if he can. Or will he try and help Lance Armstrong keep a podium place? It's going to be an intriguing day tomorrow, that's for sure. But tonight he goes away, a happy man again, as still the leader by over four minutes of the Tour de France. No, he was never under any pressure at all. The team had a fairly easy ride as well because it was Team Rabobank that did most of the pacemaking, trying to pull back that early morning breakaway, which they did to su successfully on the running towards the finish. But tomorrow, Team Astana will be out and they'll be looking to race for the podium positions. They had dreams of getting first second and third I don't think that's going to happen but you just have a look at how close it is Phil from second down to fifth well these are our Hampton hotels uh, overall standings are more or less the same but the four second difference is applied Lance Armstrong close four seconds on the uh, Contador more importantly on Schleck and he's pulled four seconds away from Wiggins and Cloden today by just staying alert on the running up to the finishing line no change in the actual positions. Frank Schleck completes the top six. As if Nibali is seventh. Christian van der Velde holds on to eighth. A great performance by Christian this year after his fourth place last year. Lumevel keeps top Frenchman there. Michael Astelosa is in tenth. And these are a bit further down now. Kreuzinger, we're going now to quarter of an hour behind the leader in the Tour de France. Sandy Cassar, 13th there. Sastre completing the top 15. And uh, right down to the top 20. George Hincapi. Despite all the work he does for everybody else, he's still 20th in the Tour de France. He's a top man, George Hincap. He says he's not going to participate in the Tour next year. I certainly hope he does come back. Tor Hushoft has lost five points of his lead to Mark Cavendish, but he's still looking very solid in the green jersey race, Phil, for the most consistent rider on every individual stage. Well, he's proved now he's going to... Uh, the, the, the wiseness of breaking away in the Alps and stealing those 12 points on the route of the Tour de France over the mountains. They might be crucial now because Cavendish scored 35 today. Tor, though, had to go for second place. He got 30. So on the end of the day, uh, Cavendish has just closed in five points. I think we can have a look at those standings. There they are. 260 plays 235 now. He was 30 behind. Cavendish is now 25 behind. The others aren't in the race, but Cholik has come up to third now and jumped over Rockhass and Nicholas Roach. Well, great ride by Nicholas Roach. You're always being very uh, consistent, but look at the gap filled between Hushoff, Cavendish and the rest of the sprinters in this race. Back to the uh, podium. We're running around tonight, aren't we? Fel Franco Pelazzotti dropped off the back of the race to keep out of trouble, maybe to save himself for a show on Mont Ventoux tomorrow. He had no reason to chase points today. That must be a wonderful feeling. He's already won the competition. Yeah, I think he's uh, got uh, just inside of 80 points advantage over Egoi Martinez, who consolidated his second position this afternoon. But this guy, having come to the Tour de France looking to finish third overall inside the top three, wasn't able to do so. He's changed his ambitions to great success. Well, Ego Martinez uh, nipped a few points today just to consolidate that second place and stay clear of Federigo, Contador and Christoph Kern. But Pelosotti won this race in a terrific expedition in the Alps. Total of 196 points in the mountains. That's a high total, I must say.
Right, folks, back to the podium. Here we go. Now it must be the white jersey this time as Andy Schleck is brought out in his national champions jersey of Luxembourg uh, to pull on his white jersey. He won this competition last year. And he'll be looking to try and win it again tomorrow because it's on the slopes of the Mont Ventoux that if there is going to be any change around in this competition, it will come from Vincenzo Nibali. But I have to say, Andy Schleck is one of the best climbers in the Tour alongside Alberto Contador. So theoretically, Phil, there shouldn't be a threat, but you never know the way this Tour de France has been unfolding. Well, he said before the time trial, I can still win this race. I don't think he can now personally because his time trial wasn't good enough. Nobody expected Contador uh, to win the time trial. And uh, 4 minutes, 11 seconds is deficit. He'd be an amazing man if he can take that time on Mont Ventoux tomorrow. Uh, but remember, Schleck and his brother Frank are going to hit Lance Armstrong with everything they've got tomorrow because they want 1-2-1-2-3 one, two, uh, two, one, two, rather on the podium. And that's never been done by Luxembourg riders. Well, most aggressive rider, and that's not surprising, Phil, that it's gone to Leonardo Duque. He was one of the riders in that early breakaway of 19 men, and he was the one who continued after it was just about to get pulled back into the fold. So he's going to take uh, the most aggressive number tomorrow on the stage, and that's for the rider. It's voted, by the way, by some ex-professional bike riders, including Bernard Hino and uh, Jackie Durand, and a number of uh, journalists as well. The rider that they felt has been the most aggressive rider, the most attacking rider on each individual stage. Yes, he's a very good rider, Leonardo Duque. Been very aggressive today. A bit unlucky didn't work out for him. As we said earlier, nine times out of ten, that breakaway would have worked. Well, as we look across at the clouds here, we're not very far away from Mont Ventoux. In fact, we could see it on the drive here last night. And I can tell you that Mont Ventoux, it's probably about 80 kilometers away as the crow flies, but it stands out over all the other mountains, and the boys are going there tomorrow. They are going there tomorrow, Phil. It's uh, going to be a massive showdown. There'll be a huge crowd out there. It will be the playground of the climbers. Alberto Contador is one of the great climbers. But I've appreciated the Schlecks because they've said what they're going to do throughout this bike race. They said they were going to attack all the way through the Alps, which they did. Mm. They've said they're going to attack tomorrow. Andy Schleck wants to get his brother Frank onto the podium alongside him when they get to Paris on Sunday. But a certain man who's won the Tour de France on seven occasions, Lance Armstrong, wants to make sure that he stands on the podium too. So it will be a right royal battle. So that's all tomorrow. Remember, the last hour of the race tomorrow is all on Mont Ventoux and we'll bring it to you commercial free. So something to look forward to there for sure. Well, we've still got a little ways to go and some more information to impart with you, so we'll take another break. And when you come back, we'll still be here in the commentary box in Obenar. See you in just a moment. When your engine's running clean, you feel it. And Pennzoil Platinum Motor Oil cleans out up to 46% of sludge in your first oil change and continues to clean in your next change. Feel our ultimate clean. Not just oil, Pennzoil. It was the perfect break-in. But someone worse was already inside. Now the family he came to rob is the family he has to save. Critics are calling The Collector the must-see horror film of the summer. A new horror icon is born. The Collector. Rated R. Starts July 31st. Well, I was shopping for a new car. Which one's me? A cool convertible or an SUV? Too bad I didn't know my credit was whack because now I'm driving off the lot in a used subcompact. F-R-E-E, -E, that spells free. Creditreport.com, baby. Saw their ads on my TV. Thought about going but was too lazy. Now instead of looking fly and rolling fat, my legs are sticking to the vinyl and my posse's getting laughed at. F-R-E-E, -E, that spells free. Creditreport.com, baby. Offer applies with enrollment and triple advantage. Right now at Lowe's, get 10% off Energy Star products throughout the store. And you can even ask for an additional 10% off all your purchases or special financing for 12 months when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Lowe's, let's build something together. This is Testosterone Theater on Versus, and this is August. Sweaty, steamy. August. Awesome sports flicks. August. With Van Damme. Hiya. How do you do that? Hiya. Oh, no, he can't see. Oh. And Sunday Aggression with Mick Screamy. Yeah. And Miss Steamy. Yeah. Go back to the minors with men in lingerie. It makes you uncomfortable. Watch it anyway! It's man golf with Costner and Cheech. Hey. Swing in water, swing in water, swing after swing. Why won't Cheech stop him? Watch it all on Testosterone Theater on Versus.
When was the last time you climbed a tree? Or bit off more than you could chew? Remember when you landed the big one? Or at least said you did? Save on the gear to get it done at Bass Pro Shops, like Bushnell 8x30 binoculars with built-in camera for only $99.94, and the Ruger Limited Edition 22 rifle for just $299.99. Your adventure starts here. Make plans now for the Bass Pro Shops Fall Hunting Classic. The 2009 Tour de France on Versus is brought to you by Road ID. Visit RoadID.com for a full line of customizable ID gear to help outdoor athletes stay safe. And by Warner Brothers Pictures Orphan. There's something wrong with Esther. Now playing in theaters everywhere. So Obana delivers a surprising twist on our cycling saga here at the 2009 Tour de France. Not the way most experts figured it would pan out, but that's why it's up to the athletes to decide it. Bob, Mark Cavendish wins his fifth stage of this year's tour. Incredible job by Cavendish to get himself over that last climb of the day, a Category 2 just before the finish. Cavendish, when he gets a chance to see the finishing line with a clear set of uh, a alleyway to the finish, Cavendish very rarely loses. He's the fastest man in the sport. But for Mark Cavendish, the question was getting over that last climb in the main group and having a chance to win. Then his team took over, chased down Alessandro Bellan, and it was a no-brainer for Cavendish to win the stage. Bob and I wrapping up stage 19. So what this does is it increases the drama of this green jersey battle. A lot of us figured it was all over. But Cav, he's got a different thing on his mind, doesn't he? Well, yes, Mark Cavendish felt that he was relegated unfairly by the judges a few days ago. That took 13 points away and gave Tor who shoved a big advantage in the green jersey competition, but they both fought tooth and nail on the last climb to have a chance to see the ascendancy of that jersey. That battle is going to go all the way down to the last sprint on Sunday on the Champs Elysees. A great battle for the green jersey. It was an incredibly emotional win for Mark Cavendish. Frankie Andreu spoke with him after the stage. Congratulations, Mark, your fifth stage victory. I know you enjoy winning, but do you get a little bit more enjoyment about beating the green jersey now? No, not at all. Um, it's irrelevant, you know. It's just the uh, it's beating the mountains that uh, that gives me more gratification. You know, that was a hard climb at the finish. And it was about getting over that. I, I I put the top of the climb as my finish line. If I get there, then I can go and straight on the real finish. We only had three guys after it, and uh, <laughs> what a job those three guys did. All three of them emptied the tank the day before Mon One Two. And that takes, that takes determination, that takes guts, and that takes will, you know, to put me in the best position to win. And, uh, you know, for me, that goes down as my, my nicest victory, just how it went with the climb and then with the way the guys rode, you know. We were, we were on a back foot, but, but we came through. So, Talking about emptying the tank, how much did you have to empty the tank to be able to stay on that climb when Minchoff was really going? It was hard. It was really hard, you know. But when you've got guys staying with you, you know, and you give up, then that's not fair on them. And uh, I said if the guy stayed with me, there's no way I can give up. You know, I have to go, go, go till I can't go anymore. And it was grim. It was so, so grim at the top. You know, it got really hard. And my saddle was going further and further up my arse. And uh, but I got over, and then it was just a case of, well, it wasn't time to recover on the descent because we were full gas chasing. But, uh, you know, we did it, and it's, it's nice. Well, it paid off nicely with the win. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We saw a feature on those unwritten rules of the Peloton today there, and I think Mark hinted at another one. When your team does that much work, you never want to let them down. You cannot let your teammates down, and they drag Mark Cavendish over the last climb. Then they did a huge chase when the world champion attacked Alessandro Balan from the Lamprey squad. Mark Cavendish had no choice except to sit on the wheels and really suffer, go through all the pain required, and that's an unbelievable job for any sprinter to do. And you saw how small the group mm -hmm. was with, at the end, so for Cavendish, to be able to do that, even gap the field at 12th place. And Lance Armstrong, very astute to get into that position, but Cavendish beating Hushovd, and that is an unbelievable ride. One of the best victories I've ever seen from Mark Cavendish. Mark Cavendish may have won the stage, as we saw, but the man with the ultimate goal that Cavendish wants, the green jersey, is still Tor Hushov. Frankie's with him right now.
Tour today, a, a surprising field sprint. Many thought it was going to go away in a break. Uh, the last climb, uh, very fast by the pace of Minchoff. Uh, how did you find yourself coming over that? And then tell me a little bit, the last couple hundred meters, how that sprint was. First of all, it was a really fast and hard day. Uh, for me, it was the hardest day in Tour de France so far. And over the last climb, uh, yeah, I just hanged on, uh, really on the limit. And uh, I was really tired in sprint, so I, I did a good sprint. But uh, today, again, I couldn't be the Cavendish in the last couple of hundred meters. Right now, you have the green jersey. Cavendish has gained five points on you. Uh, the next challenge will be on the Champs-Élysées. Uh, how do you feel with your focus, and are you going to try to win on the Champs? Uh, I mean, my form is good, so, uh, so I think I, I know I can win on Champs-Élysées. It's a different sprint, but uh, on the other side, my biggest goal that day is to make sure that I win this green jersey since I'm fighting for it for three weeks. And, uh, and then we see, but uh, of course my dream is to win, win there with this year. So. When you're in that final sprint on the Champs-Élysées, how do you balance, like obviously you want to keep the green jersey, but like one mistake can really change everything, either from a crash or losing too many positions. How do you handle that? Yeah, I mean, I have to be up there, be in the front, but not take too big risks. So if, I mean, if I crash, I'm out of, out of and I'm going to lose it. So I have to stay up there, be focused and uh, not do any stupid uh, mistakes. All right, good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Tor. Two days ago, Tor Hushov said it was his best day on the bike. Today, he says it's his hardest day on the bike, but this battle will certainly continue in a couple days' time. Tor also mentioned about how attentive he has to be, and when you mention the word attentiveness, there's one man in the peloton that comes to mind. That is Lance Armstrong. Aside from the sprinters today, Bob, he's the only overall contender that didn't lose any time. Yes, they made a split in the group because it was a very small group at the end and a big sprint to the line, a couple of technical corners just before the finish, and they opened up a gap the judges did, the timekeeper seeing there was more than a bike length. So what happens in that circumstance, they take the time of the stage winner and then the time of the first rider after the gap is opened up. That turned out to be four seconds and Lance was right there in the front. He was the only overall contender to do that. It was a day where we figured it wasn't even going to be for the sprinters. It certainly wasn't going to be for the overall contenders to be in the mix because tomorrow is the big day. Mont Ventoux, we have waited all tour for it. And in fact, we've waited almost a year for it, haven't we, since that announcement that the tour made back last October. This is a stage that you're not going to want to miss. It's a mountain that the riders know and that the riders hold in awe. Well, this is Mont Ventoux, and it's now or never. The Mont Ventoux will make or break your Tour de France. Just look at the pain on the riders' faces. Well, all that's left now is for the riders to face up to the giant of Provence, Mont Ventoux. Mont Ventoux is an epic in the Tour de France history. An extremely difficult climb. It's, it's very long. I can imagine it's going to be a very difficult day. This climb is a brutal, brutal beast of a climb. Well, Mont Ventoux is huge. It's massive. And to be on the penultimate day of the tour is unheard of, and it's going to make the entire tour. It all comes down to the battle on Mont Ventoux. It'll take some mental strength to, to put out a good performance and then some physical strength to back that up. This course will now look straight up into the sky. At the top, there's absolutely no trees whatsoever. So you can see the, the pelt unwinding up, and you can see the caravan start to come up, and it almost it truly looks like the moon. Well, now they've turned around to Shelly Reynard. They really have come onto the moonscape here now. This is without doubt the hardest part of Mont Ventoux. It's really dry and sometimes it'll be really windy. It's going to be hot. And as they climb up the steep side of Mont Ventoux, it's not just the slope, but it's also the crosswinds they're going to encounter now. It's steep and never lets up. It has a lot of history to it, and people get all fired up about it. And, you know, the name Ventoux, freak out. I think it's going to create all kinds of drama. Well, Armstrong, I think, really does like this climb, but it's hurt him. And personally speaking, I have a lot of regrets over the Vontu. I just, I wanted that thing. Well, just one bend to go now, and then Armstrong will see the finishing line of the climb. It's been a tough day. I left unfinished business there. This is the last great obstacle of the Tour de France 2009. I've got them. I know you have them. Goosebumps, baby, because tomorrow it is game on. Lance Armstrong has said time and time again coming into this Tour de France, 
if nothing else, this stage would have brought him back out of retirement. Well, you can lose a lot of time on Mount Ventoux, even if you're having the best day of your life. It's an incredible mountain to finish off the tour. Well, it's not only going to finish off the Tour de France, it's going to finish off a tough day in the saddle for our riders. The penultimate day of the 2009 Tour de France, stage number 20, live on Versus Bob. It's a long one. Montelimar is the start town, but the finish everybody knows, Mount Ventoux, and the race organizers have saved the most difficult stage of the race to second to the last day, rolling terrain before we get to the last climb, but all of the discussion strategically for this year's Tour de France center on this one last climb up the dreaded and lethal Mount Ventoux. It's going to be an unbelievable day of racing. It's a long climb up to 1,912 meters. Look at that climb. It's steep. There's It's relentless. There's no shade. It's a very tough day. Well, I tell you what, the last hour is going to be commercial free live on Versus. It starts at a special time at 7 a.m. Eastern. Our expanded coverage with Bob and I will be back at 8 p.m. But as we have said, today was one of those days you didn't want to be caught out. Lance Armstrong once again, Bob, showed he is the one rider at all times that is the thinking man of the peloton. Lance Armstrong did a great job to stay in front of the split, which was at the end four seconds. Not a lot, but who knows? That might make the difference between being on or off the podium in Paris. For more information, you can always log on to Versus.com. Stage number 20 tomorrow. Pain, panic, suffering, sacrifice. It wouldn't be the tour without it, and you'll see it all etched in the faces of every rider tomorrow. For everyone here at Versus, I'm Craig Hummer. Can't wait for 24 hours. We'll see ya.